Jordan's subjective. Jordan's subjective. Jordan's subjective. Jordan's subjective perspective. We're live with Trent Maxwell. Hello, everyone. I don't know why, but your last name specifically like makes me think of British. Like I feel like I need to say it in a British accent. Well, do whatever you want, man. I've always I go with uh, Maxwell House Coffee. That's what I always okay. think of. Yeah. Is that the the one with like our house? I I don't know if they have any commercials like that. Um, the only coffee one I can think of is Folgers. The Folgers. Is that our room. house? In the middle of the street? Are those the lyrics? Uh. You know what I'm talking about? Like our house in, in the, the middle, middle of the street. I don't know what. I just had to hit some notes that. there. We'll have to, we'll have to Google that. Um, but no, I uh, I once told this girl back in middle school that my family was like the heir to Maxwell House Coffee and she believed me and I was like no <laughs> I'm just kidding <laughs> for like 20 minutes I was going yeah we got limos we got private jets we fly wherever you want it's awesome and she's like that's so cool <laughs> I was like why would I be here I was at like some random campus in Jackson Tennessee <laughs> just at, it's like at, why here at a church camp which yeah that's awesome yeah at least you weren't one of those assholes back in grade school that said they were like related to Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> and then you're like, no way. Yeah, like I mean you, you it's cool if you say that, I guess, like if you're joking. But if you don't tell anybody you're joking, then you're an asshole and yeah. you're lying most of the time. No, it's true. I do I actually have one of my ex girlfriends is related to Jesse James and what? then another one of my ex girlfriends is related to Napoleon Bonaparte. Oh my isn't that crazy? Yeah, like the Jesse James is a little bit more believable because he like has roots here, kinda. I mean, his hideouts and stuff. But the Napoleon Bonaparte, that's that's wild. That's crazy. Yeah, <laughs> I don't remember how either one of them were related, and obviously it'd be like super distant. Yeah, time. far far amount down the lineage, but still weird. So weird. It looks like Madness is the group that sings "Our House." Madness. Yep, it's a band called Madness. So. Okay. Do you ever want to listen to a bop? Could you imagine yeah. being an artist and like specifying and like what's what's that even called? Whenever jingles, jingles. Oh yeah, yeah. That would suck. Yeah. <laughs> like I don't know. I feel like you kind of got to sell out at a point. But then yeah. then again, if like if that's your niche and like you just like kill it at jingles, then actually I can respect it. That yeah, wouldn't I suck. Mean, I changed my absolutely. opinion. Like Sham Wow guy, like they're known for like stuff like that. Billy Mays. Oh yeah. Rest in peace. What a legend. To be like a commercial guru. That'd be awesome. Be sweet. Whew. That's what you're famous for. Because that dude, that Sham Wow dude is fucking famous, man. Yeah. It's probably loaded, too. Yeah. <laughs> He's definitely loaded. And you know what he spent that money on? Sham Wow's. Sh- Sham Wow's and cocaine. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> that guy was on something. He was on... He was... <laughs> quick message from our sponsor, Bang Energy Drink. The... Fuel your destiny of energy drinks, and this is rainbow unicorn flavored, which is a ridiculous name. But I mean, he's got to have some sham wows to be able to clean the tables and countertops off after <laughs> he does his. He thing. was high energy, but like oh, strung yeah. out energy. <laughs> yeah, sham wow, woo! <laughs> it's like, dude, it's pretty cool, but you can settle down a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little bit. I mean, he got everybody talking. That's true. That's what their point to make was. Get everyone noticing. I don't so. think I've ever seen a sham wow in person. I, I have. We have some of my work. Really? Yeah. I, mean, I don't think they're like the <laughs> sham wow brand, but they're the same. They're just like an off brand sham wow. Okay. So, yeah. Same point. Same yeah. point. That's funny. Yeah, everybody just buys the, the off brand based on their, yeah. their exact concept. Yeah, exactly. Wait, where do you work at? Uh, Alamo Draft House, movie theater. Oh, you Franco. work there too? Yeah. With Harry and CJ? Yeah. Oh, absolutely, man. Yeah. Yeah, no, great guys. Great guys. I love working there. Yeah, CJ's been on this. Uh, yeah, Harry hasn't, but CJ's been on this podcast as well, so. Oh, that's awesome. I love CJ. Dude, that dude, that dude's, like, fucking awesome. He's he's a miracle. He was born, like, four months premature. What? Yeah. That's crazy. CJ's, like, a, one of my favorite people I've met down in Springfield, yeah, no, for he's, sure. Yeah, he's super smart, too. Yeah. I mean, I've never, like, seen him in school, but just from, like, his work ethic and stuff, like, he's very procedural. He likes to get stuff done. Like, no, he's a he's a great guy, for sure. Good, good, good dude. Stumbling over my words today, I feel. I say good, 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 good. It's all good, man. It's that bang energy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this bang got me all mixed up. That sounds good, good. That sounds Russian. 
<laughs> well, you, you caught me in my attire for an interview. So How'd that is, go? Where was that This at? is apparently what I wear whenever I go to get jobs at Olive Garden. So. Oh, nice. Yeah. Serving? Or yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. You think it went pretty well? or? I feel pretty confident in interview settings. It, honestly, dude, like this podcast has made me like so much more confident with interviews because like sitting across the table with somebody like I don't know, just, you just got to maintain eye contact, yeah, like no, just definitely. be nice and be real. Definitely, man. No, that's awesome. Have you served anywhere before? Yes, it's Steak and Shake and it sucks. <laughs> yeah, that's what I've heard it's not a very good place to work. Yeah, Steak and Shake's not, especially if you get a shitty part of town like I was in. Oh, yeah. It's uh, it's not a fun place, mainly because your quality of your quality of customers isn't terrible, at least like where I was. Yeah. But my quality of coworkers, it was about half and half. Like half were half were all right, and then the other half were just very difficult to get along with. No, I feel that man. I definitely feel that. I've been lucky at my job to get along with pretty much everyone. Most places I've worked, I usually have a few people. I'm like, I can't stand them. But no, at my work, like most people are pretty chill. So that's probably that's probably my favorite job I've ever had, honestly. No shit. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I think it also helps that I work with some friends like my friend Harry and Logan and Michael, all guys I'm really close with. We're all they're goofing around together. Oh, there you go. Yeah, it's awesome. Or any of those guys like you're like your superiors or anything? No. Um. Well, Logan is now. Logan got promoted to supervisor for there. So I just feel cool. like that'd be really chill to work under one of your good buddies. Oh, yeah. well, Harry and I are both shift leads, so we kind of are like the not like managers but we're like the step step down from manager slash supervisor to our department so like some nights we're managing like the runners like hey can you go to a theater do a clean go to do a bathroom check like doing random stuff like that okay so, yeah it's not a very hard job but no, sounds more chill it's more yeah it's pretty chill Definitely. yeah that's what's up man yeah sure free movies too do you have any crazy stories of people doing crazy shit at movie theaters i I once was doing a theater clean uh, right after the movie got out, and I found some toenails, toenail clippings on the, like, right by the railing. Well, how'd you know they were toenails and not fingernails? Well, they looked a little bit too thick to be okay. fingernails, but, you know, there's some people with some pretty fat fingers, so you there never you know. There yeah. So, I don't, we don't know for sure, but I, I'm going to assume they were toenails. I just don't know how they were clipped during the movie, or... What happened? It was, or how no one noticed that because they had people sitting right next to them, so it was weird. That's disgusting. Yeah, and then we we found uh, some depends adult diapers like in uh in the movie theaters before, and then baby diapers have been like chilling there too. <laughs> it's like, can you people just not throw that away in the bathroom? Like, do you really have to put that here? Yeah. For us to <laughs> deal with. Oh, that's disgusting. Yeah. Harry's... And to think they just whipped their kid out. Like they they yeah. probably changed the diaper in the movie theater. Yeah. That's a weird thought. Am I, am I saying this to... Were they sitting in the back at least? But, uh, I have no idea. I can't remember. Okay. I think the person with the toenails was in the back for sure at the top. The baby but better be. like. I hope. You never know. I'll have to ask whoever was cleaning that theater because I remember they told me about it and I was like, what? <laughs> Why can babies be naked and we can't be naked exactly. like that? Ridiculous. Exactly. Ridiculous. We got to have some free nature too. <laughs> Not just babies, man. No, I will say though, man, I, uh, I have this weird habit of... And it makes me empathize with the janitors that have to clean up with me, clean up after me. But I do this, like, I don't even think, realize I'm doing it a lot of times. But, like, mainly when I'm in class. Like, during the summertime, I feel like my nails get longer because I, I it's like a thing I've developed in class when I zone out. It's like some form of, like, stimulation like or something. With your fingers. And well, fingers. I, like, literally saw off my fingernails. Oh, wow. And I just leave them on. Is that gross? I don't like, think it's necessarily gross. Do you, like, bite them or do you, like, literally just, like. No, I saw them off. Like, I, I just, like, I'll, like be like zoning out in class and then just kind of like saw away at it and then rip it off and that's it no dude everyone has their own habit i i, I feel like I, it's weird like i, I do it and i think it's I don't weird think it's weird it would be gross if you like were biting on them and then like spitting them out on the floor or something but i don't think like kind of peeling them sawing them off is that so weird. it's kind of impressive i i don't know how you even do that i can't saw my fingernails off i feel like so. You can with enough dedication. Well, I guess. Resilience, persistence, lack of ignorance. Exactly. You know, you got to stay dedicated. Listen to this, folks. <laughs> <laughs> motivational speaker over here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be like that, the forceful kind of motivational speaker. Yeah, just just <laughs> on the spot, just just constantly, <sighs> yeah. You didn't ask for it, but I'm giving it to you. I'm giving you that motivational speech as you get ready in the morning for your, your day, <laughs> as you wash your hands at the restaurant. 
I'm giving it to all the strangers I come into contact with on a daily basis. I would just I would buy a soundtrack of you just yelling at me <laughs> just to get my stuff together. Do it, <laughs> the shallow <pub. laughs> Just do it. Be awesome. That would be awesome. A soundtrack. <laughs> get your sound fucking license. life together. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. You big old pussy. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, it would be for like different like uh, times too, like run into your wife's birth like of their kid get there now <laughs> <Or> like, <laughs> just something random get to work something like that uh, hurry up and take action yeah exactly. don't think about it get there <laughs> yeah exactly exactly that's man. hilarious <laughs> oh, sure. get me on your your um i could do like some like going to sleep where i like yeah. whisper it like i do some like asmr <laughs> motivation <laughs> speech and i do like a wake-up call they, so like get the fuck up for like those two tracks they have to be wearing like these kind of headphones just suction on their ears while they sleep <laughs> so it's blaring in their ears when they wake up they care that much yeah they they, <laughs> they sacrifice giving up laying on the side of their head <laughs> that sweet yep. comfort of yep. laying on the side of your head <laughs> just to get my motivation just straight just like that <laughs> hear your voice to go to sleep and to wake up <laughs> <laughs> we put like uh, like the uh, like electro things like oh, electrodes yeah. all over their body and just shock them in the morning <laughs> to wake up. That'd be awesome. <laughs> people just will probably do it. For, do people will go to ridic? They will go to ridiculous measures just for like, kind of like bullshit motivation. Yeah. You oh, know? Yeah. No, it's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's crazy. It, I don't know what, what I think of this, but like, do you know what like a vision board is? Like setting like your goals like on a board like stuff you kind of have in mind of what you want to accomplish and stuff like that. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, I, there's one right there. Yeah, I I have one right there. To block off the window if you see it behind there. Oh yeah. Yeah, I got into that phase for a little bit and it was it was cool I guess, but I just kind of think it's bullshit. I don't know. Like the idea is like you look at what you want and then you kind of like somehow the laws of the universe kind of manifest it for you. Yeah, I feel like the problem, like, with that is you're striving to be someone you're not. Like, I mean, you can achieve that same success level, but you shouldn't keep spending your whole life trying to get there, you know, because life, you never know what's going to happen. So, I mean, enjoy it a little bit. Try to be successful, I mean, obviously. Mm -hmm. But don't strive to be Bill Gates. Just strive to be yourself and then see what happens along the way, you know. So that's, that's my take on that's it. some real motivation right there. Oh, thanks, man. <laughs> <laughs> that's my take on it. But no, for sure. Respect. Respect. Thanks, man. Yeah, I, I will say I, I kind of do like a mixture. Like, I feel like I, I will like find people on the Internet and I'm like that cool. That guy's cool as fuck. Yeah. And then I'll kind of take apart, like pick apart people. I'm like, I really like how he does this. Yeah. And it's like I like that characteristic, but am I trying to be that person? Like, am I trying to become Jeff Bezos just because he's rich as fuck? <laughs> yeah. Like, I might, I might read a book about Jeff Bezos and be like, dude, he was an asshole in this way and this way and this way. I don't know Jeff Bezos. I'm yeah. not, I obviously, but I mean, uh, who, who was it? Who was I thinking of? Steve Jobs, like, oh, yeah. you know, like, he's got yeah. a lot of great characteristics that you can take away, but, like, overall, you probably don't want to become the end, too. No, no, definitely not. So, no, just keep being yourself, and then try to be successful, too, at the same time, doing your own thing. So, I'm definitely with you on that. I feel that right here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> How's that Rainbow Unicorn treating you? I love how you remember the name of it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Rainbow Unicorn Bang. Sorry. That's also the bang, bang. brand name. Chitty Chitty Bang. I'm one bang. of those yeah, I'm one of those uh Instagram models promoting this. But now it's uh it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Have you ever had one before? I've had a bang, I've never had a rainbow unicorn one. You should try a rainbow unicorn bang. All right. Just take a sip of that rainbow unicorn. Kind of has a kinda has a tropical feel to it, I feel like. So. I like these things because they're like no sugar, which yeah, no bang. I don't know. I was kind of tired and I wanted to wake up. And I'm doing a group project after this, so I was like, oh, I'll get one. I may cut it off now, though. I don't know how how much I even feel it. So I feel you. This Liberty Brew I'm drinking, Mountain Dew, is pretty solid. If you ever want to get some Mountain Dew, I haven't drank soda since a long time. That's I pretty good. much I started drinking soda whenever I I like started drinking alcohol. Honestly. Oh wow! Like. You hadn't drank it like ever in your life before. Or no, that's crazy. That's Are you, do you like to game out and drink Mountain Dew? I feel like that's <laughs> like they're so associated. You know, like yeah, gaming no. and Mountain Dew, like they're I, almost 
synonymous. At I this definitely point. used to kind of be like that back in like middle school in the Call of Duty days. I was mm-hmm. never like good at Call of Duty, but all my friends played, so I just would play with them. But no, I would Cheetos, Flaming Hot Cheetos, um, Mountain Dew. Any I feel kind like of every food. gamer's got their food or like their yeah. go-to thing. Yeah, no, definitely. I don't, I don't really do that too much anymore. I'll, I'll probably just eat like some chips anymore, but I don't really drink Mountain Dew that much. Mm. So, yeah, I drink, water is pretty much all I drink now, and I've noticed I've been feeling a little healthier since I started like doing that more often than just strictly drinking soda and Powerade and stuff like that. Respect. Yeah. So. Yeah, I feel like that's a good indicator to go off of. Is like, <laughs> yeah, to know if like you're like if you feel like ass. It's like, it's probably not good for you. Yeah, yep. And just looking at the ingredients in some of the sodas, I'm like, ooh, that doesn't <laughs> sound healthy or natural or anything. So like I, I kept getting these, like, $1 things from Burger King. What were they, the chicken sandwich for $1. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's yeah. a deal. That's a snack. Yeah. But then I would, like, get two of them and stack them together, and they're super greasy. But I'm like, it's chicken. Like, how bad, yeah. how bad can it be for you? And they make you feel like ass. I was yeah. like, that's probably just not good for you. I don't know what, I don't know any of the nutritional value or anything. I don't know the caloric intake, but, like, it's gross. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I sometimes have moments where I just want to eat, like, a five-year-old, though. I'll get, like, Lunchables and, mm-hmm. like, Twinkies, and I'll just pig out on it. I'm like, I just basically ate plastic, but I don't really care. And then I'm like, oh, that's also kind of gross at the same time. True. But, yeah. No, definitely. Just rubber and plastic. Yeah, it's basically those things. I mean, for sure. I know there. There's this stuff in. I don't know what this stuff is called. It's banned in every country in the world except the United States. But Chick Fil A has it. McDonald's has it. I believe what? Burger King has it. It's in their bread. Oh, this okay. is something to Google. That's good. That's it's, good. Yeah, it's like <laughs> it's it's literally banned every other country in the entire world except the United States for whatever reason. But it, the the I think the reason they put it in there is. One, I'm assuming this is an assumption. I'm assuming it's cheap, and then two, it's it probably fills you up, so it makes you feel satiated more, which is part of the experience of buying fast food is you want to feel full. Yeah, no, but that's. I don't even know what you would type in. Maybe like um, I'll say what ingredient is banned everywhere but the U.S. and see if anything br- pops bread. up. Bread, it, it's something in in bread. Maybe it helps the dough rise or something along those lines. I just hate that thought that like you. I don't know, you're like being poisoned by your food and you don't even know it because you're like oblivious to that. And then I I just don't like it whenever you hear about things that are banned everywhere else in the world except your own country. Yeah, like what are we we doing? It's like this is a great country, but I don't know. Have you at least considered banning this? That's in – there's no way the government or FDA or whoever it would be that they wouldn't know that. Yeah. No, I – I mean they're definitely aware that this stuff is in there and they're definitely aware of the – the effects if you want to look at this from like a conspiracy point of view it's like what are they trying to do to the population yeah no there's there's some sketchy stuff out there for sure i wouldn't be surprised really i'm i doubt it's more it's probably more of a capitalist view than it is a um than it is from like i mean if you want to look at it from like a you know stoner conspiracy point of view like paranoid (laughs) stone of view or what am i saying point of view it's probably more of just minimizing costs and there's probably some practical reason why they do it, but it like the ethics behind it, you think it'd be banned. It, it might be called potassium bromate because it's, that's it's, probably in this bang. <laughs> so it's often added to flour for use in bread and rolls, cookies, buns, and pastry dough and pizza dough. Is it, does it say anything about being banned? Uh, says the International Agency for Research on Cancer consi- considers it a possible human carcinogen. Um, well, that's not good. But it's banned in Europe. And then they said in recent years, some American restaurant chains have responded to consumer pressure and removed them from their food. Okay. So I don't think it's completely banned in the U.S. yet, but I think people are starting to. It's talking about specifically in bread? Uh, yeah. Well, they said it's often in flour. So yeah, okay, yeah, okay. And stuff. So, what are the negative? But, well, it's a carcinogen, so like that can cause cancer. Like it's a, they've noticed like that specific carcinogen can lead to cancer in people and stuff. Shit's not banned. I need <laughs> to educate my st- myself on topics like this more. I realize yeah, no, I, I a lot of things come up, and then I will 
realize that I have like I have like a snapshot of the entire picture. Yeah. Like there's this massive picture at hand, and then and I don't I know like nothing. I just know it's banned because I skimmed through a fucking article one day when I was bored, and then realized that I know absolute dog shit about the actual topic. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm the same way, man. <laughs> I'm the same way. Uh, no, that's crazy though. If it's not banned yet, because. No, oh, I was eating Cheez-Its one day. My stepbrother kind of went on, like, this health kick of, oh, that that's going to give you cancer and stuff. And it's like, okay. But I was eating Cheez-Its one day, and he was like, look up this ingredient on here. And I looked it up, and it could, like, has been known to cause cancer and stuff. And I was like, I don't want to stop eating Cheez-Its, but I might have to. I just so. don't understand why this country hasn't taken more precautions to things like that that are, like, clearly linked, and they're not – putting any more restrictions on these companies to be able to prevent them from putting shit like this. Like if it's yeah. known poison, like if we are knowledgeable about this, if it's one thing if we're ignorant, but like that's ridiculous to think, man. I'm not, I'm not saying I believe this, but I've seen some conspiracy theories out there. They're like, well, maybe these medical research facilities and these food companies are working together for that kind of stuff. Cause you give someone food that's going to cause them, cancer well they're gonna have to spend money on medical cost now too Uh uh-huh and they kind of just coincide because they're buying that product then having to pay for so what's the incentive for the the food companies to do it i minimizing costs and then like i mean let's let's say this that we actually believe this this conspiracy like what what would you think the incentives would be for the for the food company to help out the medical industry i mean they could receive some form of bribery or some shit yeah, I mean, I I don't know. I feel like part of the stuff that's in food uh, are, like, preservatives and chemicals to make it last longer. So, I don't know. I feel – I just feel like those people were saying that um, they could kind of go hand in hand. Uh, people might want to buy the food products because they might be lasting longer than if they didn't have those chemicals in them, maybe being preserved longer. So, it's allowing more people to have access to buying that product in a weird way i don't know it's kind of a kind of a lengthy article i read about it but mm-hmm. i was like oh that's kind of a neat way to think about it that is yeah, yeah yeah i've thought about that as well just like i've never seen looked into the conspiracy or anything but that makes sense that i mean this is the end destination if you keep eating foods like this and then if they i mean there's incentives for the hospital to do to do something to make get more business yeah yeah no it's really unethical if that's true but yeah, no. I hate I hate how the US hasn't gotten around to like where other countries are with like lower costs for health care or uh better medical insurance, if you know what I mean. Cause, Do you like, think that's the size of the country? I don't know much about this topic. You know, it could be. I'm not sure. Um I really don't know. But I feel like there's something else we could be doing to have lower medical costs. I don't know if that's have to increase taxes or do something along those lines. I just feel like it's kind of ridiculous. Some of these costs, like a helicopter ride, could cost ten thousand dollars for like a helipad at a hospital. Can cost like ten thousand dollars for like thirty minutes to an hour long flight just from a hospital to another hospital. That's ridiculous. Yeah, that's a lot of money. So <laughs> that's a ton of money. Yeah, and like ambulances, they're oh yeah, no, they're a few they're, thousand. Yeah, so. I just feel like sometimes it's stuff. against your will. It's like, yeah. no, I don't want to go. And they're like, no, you have to go. Like, I feel like ambulance and stuff like that should be free or almost free. And then like their actual like medical procedures, I can see costing, but I feel like it's kind of ridiculous. That kind of stuff costs money that you have to pay for afterwards. I would agree. So. I would agree. Why, why not? Yeah. I don't, I don't know why. Cause I mean, you could just have a drunken night and then you don't even need to go to the hospital. I know I've had two friends that have had to go to the hospital for this exact reason. It's, yeah. Put they, the like I showed down. up to pick up one of them and they were completely good. And then same deal with my, I went to school in Chicago and one of the girls got really drunk earlier on in the night. Then by the time the ambulance showed up, she's like, like I was just in the lobby and she's like, Jordan, come with me. And I'm like, all right, cool. And like, she was completely coherent. She was not bad at all. We like, we went in and I sat by her side and she was like, she was fine. Yeah, she was fine. And same with like the other, the other friend was noticeably more drunk, but we, whenever we went to go pick him up, which I spontaneously just got thrown into, but he, um, I mean, he was he was pretty drunk, and it was a few hours later, but he was still fine too. Yeah, no. Like 
Okay. You should you should have that option unless yeah. people would abuse it, but I, I don't think people would abuse it. Yeah, I mean, like sometimes you do need an ambulance, and sometimes you don't. But I feel like you just shouldn't have to pay for an ambulance to get to a hospital. We're gonna have to pay more money for a procedure. I mean, I understand they have to pay for gas and the employees of like EMS services kind of stuff like that. But I just feel like there's a way to make ambulance cost like hardly anything. So. I never thought about that. That is really fucking whack. Yeah. That's whack. Yeah. It's pretty stupid. Yeah, it should it should be. It should be free. Why not? I don't I don't think people would call out of I, I don't think they'd they call in abundance. I think they'd call out a necessity. Yeah. Like only At least they most need of it. them. I mean you might have some a few stupid people that don't actually need it or something. But I mean just in case they did need it and you didn't know for sure what was going on, it's nice to have that for free just in case they weren't actually sick. They just were kind of having a little episode or something like that that they didn't really need medical care, but you didn't know. It's just – it's like, ridiculous to think that, like, low-income people could go into debt. Yeah. I mean, just anybody could go into debt yeah. over an ambulance ride. Yeah. Or, like, you have a trip planned and you got to cancel it because you happen to go into act like – use the ambulance and yeah it's like no i gotta use the money away from this trip towards that because yeah. i had this little episode that was completely unnecessary no it's it's crazy i wonder what an average ambulance cost or ambulance uh ride cost i'm gonna look that up real quick i'm curious i bet it varies from place to place in chicago i believe it i want to say it was about a thousand or two thousand something like that That's ridiculous. I agree. Why not at least make the transportation free? Yeah. Or at least cheaper than that. That's like a K? Like one grand, man? That's a lot of money. That's ridiculous. This one, The first sentence of this article says, One patient got a $3,660 bill for a four-mile ride. A four-mile ride? Yeah. I don't care where the fuck that is. <laughs> I don't care if that's in Dubai. Yeah. There's no reason for that. That's ridiculous. Yeah. That Nowhere is. in the country should it cost that much for four miles. No, absolutely not. Maybe maybe do like Uber prices, you know? Yeah. Why would they not call an Uber then? You know, like if we're they. Just, we're just going to get an Uber ambulance. Now it's going to be a new branch of the company. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So people just don't have to undercut pay for an the ambulances. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Oh, that's yeah. crazy. I have a buddy who works. He's an EMT and he's pretty, uh, he's got some stories. I don't remember oh, the specifics, yeah. but he, he actually told a story on this podcast, and he, he was blowing my mind. Like, some yeah, of the no. shit he has seen working there. Yeah, no, they they definitely deserve some high salaries, which I know a lot of them don't get the salaries they deserve for the stuff they have to deal with. But I feel like the medical company should just find a way to pay them more while taking uh, cost out of ambulance trips, ambulance rides. Absolutely. So I definitely agree with you on the uh, – at least in the element of, of – the trips being like dramatically reduced, yeah. if not free. Yeah, I don't know. I could see some problems emerging if they're free, but like, I just I couldn't imagine like, I don't know. Say I burnt my hand upstairs. Like I'm making, I'm making meth as I usually do. Yes, or, of course. Or pizza, one of the two. It's yeah. e- it's either pizza or meth. So <laughs> meth. So if I'm cooking one of my two favorite meals, then I burn myself, and I'm like, oh my god, this is definitely something I need to go to the hospital for. Okay, let's do, let's say I like I don't know I break a kneecap, so I need a I need a ride. I'm incapable of driving for whatever reason, mm-hmm. and to think that I'm suffering in pain and there's nobody going to pick me up, or like I want I call a buddy instead, or like I'm out of options yeah. except for an ambulance, and like to think that I would just suffer it out just because of monetary costs is like crazy. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. Because I would definitely think that way. I'm at a broke yeah. point in my life right now. <laughs> like I, I can't afford doing shit like that, and like, that's that's not fair. That's not fair. I'm I'm definitely on no, your side on that. Definitely not. Yeah. No. I mean, I I I do think it should either be free or lowered cost because they still do have to make money and pay the workers. So I understand that. I just figure there's some some better way that we could do that. You know. So under a grand. Yeah. Under a grand. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. Just maybe a few hundred dollars. Yeah. Just, that's not, that's Maybe not. if you want to charge like per mile. Yeah. Yeah. Like I, I get that because then you're, you're, I don't know, opportunity costs. Like 
that that ambulance could be driving somebody else around or like if somebody cries wolf or something like that like they if somebody's crying wolf maybe they should get yeah. charged i don't know but there should be like a way to like see how serious it is and somehow look at like their salaries yearly and maybe work out like a payment plan that's better than having to pay more at like one time or pay more over the co- course of a year or two you know there you go so I don't know. Here's my proposition. So somebody's, you show up to their house, and before the patient can get in the car, regardless of how severe and urgent the situation is, you make them take a lie detector test. Yes. To make sure that they're not actually full of shit. Exactly. Exactly. You never know. You make them take the (laughs) lie detector test, waste another 10 minutes. You charge them for that 10 minutes. Absolutely. And then you cruise them down to the hospital driving very very slow because you know they could still be faking it they could get a lie detector test or something <laughs> <laughs> so. then you question them verbally yeah. the entire time i don't care if they're conscious or not if they don't reply they're lying yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep exactly exactly that's funny <laughs> ambulance oh, man. man amber lance oh black betty that's crazy true <laughs> have you ever seen that video online it's like it's so stupid it was on tosh point a few years back but it was it was like Amber Lance. I forgot what they said. They, I, they're they're asking like for I've an ambulance or something. Yeah, I feel like I've seen it before. Is it like a like someone with an accent saying that or something? Or I think it, like they say Amber Lance and they say ambulance like ridiculously. Huh. No, I, I think I have. Seen that maybe. <laughs> but that's awesome. Uh, you big Tosh fan, dude. I think his. Have you ever seen Daniel Tosh's stand up? Uh, a little bit. Not not very much. Just like. One of his specials, I think I've watched before. I don't know what you're doing tonight with your time. I don't know. At some point in the next week, you should watch it. Okay. Is it on? If Netflix? you like stand up comedy at all, okay, you should nice. watch it. It's awesome. But it, it's I mean, I'm not somebody to like force my like, hey man, you should watch this. You should watch this. Yeah. I, I usually don't yeah. recommend shit, but uh, <laughs> that I think it'd be worth your time. I'll say that. Okay. I'm not gonna tell you how to live your life. You do. No, you, definitely, but, man. But no, he's uh, dude, he's. He's fucking real. He's just like <laughs> so real. He's funny. Good deal. Good deal. One of my favorite quotes in there, <laughs> and it's I love it whenever it hits home and it's making fun of like something about you. But he's like, you know what the Midwest is? The Midwest is the place where people go whenever they give up on their dreams. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> in some ways, he's kind of accurate, <laughs> but. Midwest isn't that bad. <laughs> I think it's pretty great growing no. up here. <laughs> I do too. It's it's a very pretty area. Like all of, all of Missouri, there's some crappy towns for sure. Don't get me wrong, but just driving around Branson, just any side of the state, middle of the state, you you can find some like pretty scenery, like valleys and hills. So no, I I was lucky growing up because I lived on a bluff that overlooked the river, so that was always like a peaceful place to like chill because it was like basically on a mountain like a bluff like a rock that's oh, is that really what a bluff is it kind of it's like a it's not necessarily like a mountain but it's like a hill rocky mountain kind of what are you bluffing right now is know. that really what it is i, I think should so. i make you take the lie detector test oh crap well, I, don't, I don't have the money to pay for it right now, so. <laughs> uh, that's funny <laughs> But no, that's cool. That's really cool, yeah, man. Yeah, no. So that was that was always fun because I'm from a small town. What an upbringing. Yeah. <laughs> yep. No, I was. I've kind of been in the Midwest my whole life. I've heard small towns is where the craziest shit happens. Is that oh, true? Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's crazy in good and bad ways. Like I, I remember uh, there was one day back in my sophomore year where this kid just flipped uh, another kid's hat off of his head. And they already had a fight planned out, like, to go to the Little League baseball field in our small town and just beat up on each other. So we're like, dude, you going You going to that fight after school? Hell and yeah, man. Like, I'll be there. Dude, yeah, I'm racing. I'm not even staying for the last bell to ring. Like, <laughs> I'm just booking it. I'm, I'm sneaking out. I'm getting front row. Yeah. <laughs> and we all ran to our cars afterwards and just saw these two kids wailing on each other. And then one kid goes, cops, cops. There Were no there kid. actually cops? No, we just all went, oh, no. <laughs> we just all started running for our cars and just left. There was no cops. <laughs> but, like, stuff like that over stupid stuff. I mean, that happens in any school, but I just think it's funny that they're like, let's go to the Little League baseball field <laughs> to do this. Let's settle this here. It's like, why, guys? Why? <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Honestly, no. the, the thought of, like, holding your anger back 
you know, like like just like waiting, like waiting on anger, and then you like like it manifests itself, which something you're angry about now, you like hold it up, you just store it inside, you let it just fucking, you know, just bounce around, gain energy, yeah, and then you go to another place like six hours later, like that. Yeah, I, that's a weird thought yeah, to no, me. Yeah, no, I couldn't. Like it would have to be there in the moment because after a few hours, I usually am like, you know. Maybe it's not worth it. Maybe it's not worth being mad about. And then you show up to the field, and you're like, hey, man, I know everybody he- is here. Like, the entire school right now is watching us, and everybody's so excited to see us fight. But what about, like, peace, love, and happiness? You know, what What about those qualities? What about those characteristics? <laughs> Where is the love? And then you start playing some Black Eyed Peas, some John Lennon maybe, yeah. and uh, and then – Everybody kicks your ass because <laughs> yeah. they call you a pussy. They're like, no, we came here for a fight, <laughs> and I'm not leaving. <laughs> that was a good southern accent. Thanks, man. It's all around my town. Okay. <laughs> People tell me I have a southern accent, and I, I really don't see it because I, I think I sound kind of city boy compared to a lot of people in my town, which is my hometown. You don't – you. I told you this before the podcast, but you got a radio voice. At Thanks, least I man. think so. Thanks. Yeah. My dad used to do radio, so. Genetics. Yeah, I guess I guess so. He still does advertising and stuff. So, oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, no, I've been to like gas gas stations and convenience stores back in Ohio, where my most of my family's from, and I'll just hear him like while I'm like pumping my gas or <laughs> something. He's like, "New deal on blah blah blah," and he'll just go on for whatever they're selling or whatever. That's awesome. Yeah. So to be known for like having an awesome voice. Yeah. yeah to yeah. have like a soothing, like suave voice that would be. That'd be something else. Yeah. Like, like the, could you imagine having Morgan Freeman's voice? Oh my gosh! You're dude. the talk of the internet just because your voice. I mean, you're, he's a great actor too. Don't get me wrong, but like, no, absolutely. He's he's like his popularity is probably in his voice. I bet if you typed it on Google, Morgan Freeman, I bet within the top ten res, like searches, I would even bet top five, it would be uh, Morgan Freeman voice. Oh yeah, definitely. No, it's beautiful. It's like, I wonder, wonder if he has the soundtrack. That'd be nice. I could fall asleep to that. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely fall asleep to that. No, him and uh, Samuel Ur- uh, Earl Jones, the guy that voices Mufasa. I'm not familiar now. He uh, he's the voice of Darth Vader, and uh, or not Samuel Earl Jones, James Earl Jones. I don't know why I said Samuel. Um, he voices Mufasa on Lion King and Darth Vader on Star Wars. Dude, those are some really really iconic voices. Yeah, yeah. No, he's the voice of them. That's crazy. That's the same person too. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> I know. Mind blowing. Luke, I am your father. <laughs> that's probably really bad, but no, that was perfect. I thought he was in the room with us. I didn't even know that you were saying that. Uh, th- those are both like mouthing it. <laughs> <laughs> those are both like very formidable characters too. Yeah, like he's playing a king and like the Dark Lord of the Universe. Yeah, two titles that are pretty powerful, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> that's funny. Speaking of Lion King, are you excited for the new movie coming out? I actually just heard about it probably today oh. by chance because – wait, maybe I heard about it a few months back. But um, is Donald Glover in it? Yeah. Yes, I did hear about it a few months back. And then I saw Seth Rogen is also going to be yeah, in it. Yeah, he's Pumbaa. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Who, wait, who's the cast? What's the lineup here? Uh, I think Beyonce is Nala, like the love interest, the lioness. Is and she – oh, like the queen? Uh, Yeah, like who Simba falls in love with. Like, okay. After he leaves. A.K.A. Uh, my yeah. childhood crush. Yeah, absolutely. Cartoon animal. <laughs> yep, exactly. I'm into weird shit. Hey, Don't. everyone's got their own thing. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. And then Donald Glover, I think, is playing uh, Simba, like older Simba, like as, after he's grown up. Seth Rogen's playing Pumbaa. James Earl Jones is coming back for Mufasa to voice him. Man, that's the only ones I can remember right now, but I think there's a few other famous people. That are doing it too, so that's pretty cool. Yeah, it should be pretty good. I'm excited for it. That'd be sick to be like a voice actor. Oh yeah, kind of, kind of like what your dad does. Yeah, no, definitely. Did you know Mark Hamill, the guy that plays Luke Skywalker? Did you know he does a lot of voice acting work? Really? Yeah. No, like so he voiced the uh, the Joker in like the Batman animated series and stuff, and he voiced uh I, w- I watched Child's Play the other night, the re- remake, and he was the voice of Chucky in that, and I was like. You don't sound like Luke Skywalker right now, so props to him. But no, he's a good voice actor. He's like, man, I tried one other vid- or I tried one other movie, and everybody just kept calling me Luke Skywalker. Yeah. It's like, no, I'm playing John Anderson in this movie. Fuck off. Yeah, exactly. 
No, exactly. No. That is funny. That's funny. Yeah, I didn't realize, like, because I played some Batman video games before, like, years ago. And it's Luke Skywalker's voice. I mean, it's not, like, doesn't sound the same, but it's it's him that's doing it. So I didn't have any idea until I, one person was like, yeah, did you know Mark Hamill voices the Joker? And I was like, Mark Hamill? And they're like, yeah, Luke Skywalker? I'm like, what? That's a cool little fact to know. Yeah, I like yeah. it. It's a random, random fact of the day for you. <laughs> So. Yeah, I've always uh, – oh, what was I watching the other day? I was watching Larry King interview Tyler, the creator. Oh, gosh. <laughs> it's, and it's pretty funny. But he uh, – I forgot I forgot what Larry King's question was originally. And Tyler, the creator, his response was – it was something like if you could be anything or so, or do you like – it was maybe something on the topic of being famous. And Tyler, the creator, is like, no, man, if you could be rich as fuck and nobody knows who the hell you are, that's the shit. Yeah. And, I mean, that's kind of the life of a voice actor. Like, people yeah. know your voice, but they don't know you. They're so, not following you around. Paparazzi's not following you around, really, to get pictures of you. So, because most of them don't recognize you. True. You just have seen the cartoon character or whatever you're voicing. And then the people that are going to recognize you, they got to, one, hear the voice, and then, two, they got to be observant. Yeah. So, like, you're you're going to get noticed a little bit, which would be kind of, you got to admit, that being a little, like, being noticed for something you're passionate about. That would be cool. On yeah. a mass scale is when it sucks. Like, being, like, really fucking famous, that would suck. But yeah. if you're, like, kind of known, like, every once in a while, like, maybe, like, who knows, like, once every few months you run into somebody, you, you're ordering some watermelons at McDonald's, as they offer. Of, of course, and yeah. <laughs> We're entering and you, a math equation. Exactly. Jordan bought 54 watermelons at McDonald's. <laughs> Someone took nine. How many does he have now? Just a word problem for a yeah. math class. <laughs> it, it put that in the comment section. Yeah. Right? Put the answer in the comment section. If yeah. you can figure it out. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I ordered through the microphone, and I'm like, and then there's like, Simba? Is that you? Like, oh, gosh, no. Or even better, they're like, Dad? <laughs> <laughs> That'd be a good idea for a movie. There you go. I think that's what we're going to write. We're going to write a screenplay for that. <laughs> <laughs> I've been doing these videos on my Instagram which, do you follow my my Instagram of like the my like podcast one? Is it the Intrepid Jordan one? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I, I don't know if you've ever seen, but like whenever I go to the gas station or not the gas station, whenever I go to drive throughs, I just like I don't know, I like say some like weird intro. I'll be like, hey, I just wanted. I like I'll thank people sometimes. I'm like, hey, I'd like to thank my mom, my fifth grade basketball coach. I always thank those two. And I, <laughs> I don't think I played basketball in fifth grade. Actually, I did, but. Uh, and for distilling self-esteem in me, uh, I'd like to thank my third grade teacher. I had confidence issues and some family troubles, and she really got me through some dark times. <laughs> and then I'd like to thank you for taking my order. <laughs> and how do they handle that usually? Are they like, uh? uh it depends. Sometimes people will be like, uh, okay. <laughs> and then sometimes people will just not reply. And like one time this girl gave the headset to a guy. Like she she's like, hello? And then... I, I, like, said my whole spiel, and then a guy gets on, he's like, hey, hello, what happened? What happened? Oh <laughs> she just gosh. gave me the headset. I don't know what happened. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome, though. It's kind of a neat little idea because you never know who's going to be on the other line, how they're going to react, so no, that would be funny. Could be your soulmate on the other line. That's true. You never know. McDonald's romance. Exactly. It happened. It definitely happened. How many people do you think have, like, met in a mcdonald's how many people do you think have been married in a mcdonald's you know some fat motherfuckers have been married in a mcdonald's oh i guarantee it i guarantee it uh that'd be tough It'd be tough i'd say i'd say at least uh i bet i bet it's right in the hundreds okay for people being married in a mcdonald's or near it or I, something. I bet over 100 people have done it oh yeah they're worldwide man who knows yeah exactly there's some there's some uh, interesting people out there to say the least some overweight people too. Yep, yep, <laughs> <laughs> yep. Absolutely. Yeah, that'd be, that'd be ridiculous. <laughs> I just feel like I feel like that's like a guy idea, like that gets like thrown around, around like sarcastically, and then shout out to the girl that like let that guy follow through with that. Yeah, true. If you had to get married in any fast food chain restaurant, where would you uh, go? Well, I haven't eaten McDonald's since third grade, so I think that's off the table. Well, I've, I've eaten their breakfast. I haven't eaten their lunch since third grade. So that would be off the table for me. Maybe like a Subway. Okay. Subways are pretty small, though, usually. Yeah, have to be a limited number of guests for it. And I don't know so. if I want any Indian people in my, in my wedding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> 
I don't know. I don't know. I I would definitely I'll say this much. I would go somewhere with a play place. Okay. Accommodate the children and the adults. Absolutely. Have the reception in the lobby and then the kids can go play and do their own thing while the adults exactly go crazy. <laughs> or it'd be like some like very dramatic symbolism. Yeah. It'd be a metaphor for the fact that I'm I was once a child. And now you're Bef- a man. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, now you've grown exactly. up. You moved from play place to place. Exactly. Yep. <laughs> from play place to Burger King bathroom. Exactly. It's a definitely a hierarchy going on. <laughs> I'd say mine would have to be Wendy's. Ooh, why Wendy's. so? They just have that Coca Cola freestyle machine that you have all those flavors oh. for. You never know what you're gonna want at a wedding. That's a so good idea. So all the guests would be accommodated, drink wise or soda wise. So I don't know. I feel like it's usually pretty clean too, from when I've been in Wendy's lobbies compared to like a Taco Bell or something. But I don't know. What if you married a girl named Wendy in Wendy's? It'd be wild. It'd be, be something wild. else. She'd have to wear a wig for the wedding. True. Like the hair. No. Uh, also, spicy nuggets are coming back to Wendy's. I don't know if you heard. I haven't heard. They're coming back in August. Oh, shit. They've been gone for a few years. Oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> I think it was because uh, Chance the Rapper actually tweeted, like, something like, when are we going to get these spicy nuggets back? Really? And they, like, noticed, they're like, if this gets, like, a few million retweets, we'll bring them back. And it did. Wendy's is, like, iconic on tin- or What am I saying? On Twitter. Oh, yeah. I'm They're on always Tinder. popping back at people, too, I feel like. It's awesome. We always talk about them in my marketing classes. <laughs> Like we're all Wendy specifically, like they kill it on, on oh, Twitter. Yeah. No, their marketing is unreal. Unreal for sure. There, so. there's a there's a company around here called Springy Jeans. Oh yeah. And yeah. I actually messaged them on the exact night it happened, but I was like, Hey yo, I just I heard about your jean company and I heard about them like a few days before. I just didn't get around to messaging them. I was like, Hey, if you want like, because apparently the girl's from Mo State that started it or something. Mm-hmm. And she said I I was I was thinking that I could maybe like sit down and like interview her like how'd you get this started blah 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 so I messaged her but they did a promo on their account it was a giveaway for a hundred dollars like three pairs of jeans wow and like a vintage shirt or something like that and they did it for gaining eight thousand followers and they what they did is they made people like the po- photo follow them and then they also had the screenshot the picture and then tagged them. And it's like a few day contest, and I looked at their Instagram yesterday. So this is like I think this was like day two or something of uh-huh. of that happening, and they were that photo was at like three thousand likes, when their other photos get like two hundred or three hundred. It was think, still really good. But I think I saw that. Was it like a Harley Davidson shirt? Yeah, they were good. Yeah, no, I saw that too. That's that's wow. crazy. I saw multiple people like they were at ten point five. That's wild. That's, that's wild. two thousand five hundred followers just from that. Like I, I love when shit blows up. Like yeah. I think, cause that's I, 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 think marketing is a good fit for me, and I find that shit really interesting. It's like, why did all those people do this? And yeah, like, I don't know. It's just crazy to think that girls care about jeans so much. I, I wouldn't have guessed. Dude, fashion man, <laughs> gotta be fashionable. Something I do not understand. To be honest, <laughs> I'm with you. I'm with you on that. But no, you have a nice shirt. You got a nice polo shirt. So I'm in my interview shit. That's right. That's right. <sighs> No, I have no idea. I to be honest though, I I don't think I've shopped for any of my own clothes. It's really? confession time. I'm confessing to you, Trent. Does does mommy buy the clothes still? Mommy buys the clothes still. Hey, I mean, she has good taste, you know. Do whatever works, man. I mean, I dress myself. I, I won't that's, throw that out there. That's that's I, good. That's good. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking for some positive feedback and Thank you. I, thank you for reinforcing that behavior. I will continue Absolutely. to dress myself and carrying into the future. Do you imagine being rich enough to have someone just dress you? Would you want somebody to? Not really. But just imagine <laughs> having enough money. To be, like, be like, hey, pants time. And be like, yes, master. And they just put your pants on for you. I love the snap, too. Yeah. <laughs> chop, chop. Come on. Oh, no, that'd be a wild time. I bet Jeff Bezos uh, could do that. I bet he could afford that. I, I wonder what little hacks. Like, I would love to see, like, an MTV Cribs of, like, Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos, like somebody like Dude. that. That's like filthy fucking rich, but like they didn't make it from rapping or anything like that. I just think they yeah. would have cooler shit. I think the people in Silicon Valley have cooler shit than the rappers would. Oh yeah, no, I'm definitely. just guessing, but I mean Elon Musk especially because of like the technology he's like been able to 
help come up with and stuff. I bet his house is basically just like a smart house and just everything's connected to everything. Some crazy stuff in there. I would imagine that he's got some cool shit. Oh, yeah. No, definitely. Did you see that Tesla has made an autopilot car? Like, it can drive itself and if you just sit in it. That's already implemented? I don't know if they've released it yet, but, like, <sighs> they've tested them and everything, and they are probably going to get released here pretty soon. Dude. I, I wonder what kind of regulations that takes, but that's cool. I don't know. I don't know. I'm sure they're going to cost pretty pretty high, but... I don't know. Just wait till that becomes the norm. Dude, that's crazy. That's that'll crazy be sick because it'll happen quick, too. Yeah. You know it'll happen quick because that's what the market's going to demand. People aren't going to want to drive cars if they don't have to. No. No, absolutely not. I wonder how quick it'd be. Like, because there, there will probably be a point in time where it's too – if they can prove it, like, analytically, if the data proves that this many people – like, like people are this much more likely to crash their own cars, I wonder if driving yourself would ever become illegal. Like, if, if it's too high risk to drive yourself, or, like, if somehow the, the mashup of humans and, like, autonomous AI vehicles that drive themselves, I wonder if, like, they just don't, like, possibly don't mash well, and then you have to eliminate human drivers and everybody has to get an AI car. I don't know that'd if they'd come wild. to that point, or... That'd be wild. Nah, I, I don't know what regulations come with it, because I just, I feel like there would be a lot of issues that could come up with like a software malfunction or like a gps malfunction just some electrical problems that would come with it but if it if it comes out pretty soon i wish i think it's going to it's gonna be wild that's awesome yeah no if i could afford it i definitely would have one because you get you could get drunk at a friend's house and still make it back home without having to worry about how you're getting home or anything your car could just take you that yourself. would be awesome yeah no much no more such thing as drunk driving. Like, yeah, no, absolutely. So in the long run, it would be safer than just people driving, almost, if you think about it in that way. Plus so. all the distractions that you do, too, like all oh, the bullshit yeah. you're doing while you you're driving. Still, you could still text while your car is driving. You could still do something on your phone. Don't have to worry about looking at the road and on your phone. So, I don't know. Kind of I some, love the idea. Yeah, no, I'm all for it. It almost sounds like utopian. Like it doesn't. Yeah. It, a part of it's like, no, no way that technology already exists, but it's fucking here. Yeah, no, I've only seen stuff like that in movies. I haven't seen like a self-driving car anywhere besides this one movie called Time Cop. Mm -hmm. It's got John Claude Van Damme. It's from the '90s, and there, his car. It's like set in the future, and his car. He's just like, take me home, and it's like taking you home, sir. And then he just sits there and falls asleep, and it just drives him home. That's awesome. Yeah. I'd be all for that. But I only wish. I only yeah. wish. <laughs> yep. <laughs> It'll happen awesome. in our lifetime. I really do believe that. SpaceX just did something as well. They yeah. they launched, which, by the way, the 50th anniversary of the moon landing it's was. In July, isn't it? Yeah, it was like July 20th or yeah, it's something. Yeah, it's 20. But in 1969, and I didn't realize that. It was literally just a few days that ago. That's crazy. That's crazy. That's wild. And then. um. And then Elon Musk, five I think it was like five days after, which it was it was like two days ago, like two AM. By the time this podcast comes out, it'll be like months ago. But <laughs> they, they released the Falcon Heavy, I believe the name of it is. Mm -hmm. And what they had to do is put like I think it was like twenty one satellites into three different orbits. So apparently oh. the three different orbits, which I don't even understand what an orbit is, to be honest. So I'm I'm pretty much just reciting information from an article I read. Okay. But um the three different orbits made it the hardest challenge for Elon Musk yet with test or with SpaceX. Wow. But I, mean, he, I can see why. I mean, I feel that sounds complicated. Yeah. I don't know much about astronomy or space travel, how stuff works in space, but no, that sounds complicated. I feel like I start, I've started to research it, but I still don't know like anything. Like what I'm realizing is I don't know anything when it comes yeah. to space. Yeah. No, that's, what's crazy about space is it never ends. So, that's just weird to think about, just being somewhere that never ends, just forever. I don't know. Just wild to me. Do you think that's even possible for a human mind to, like, conceptualize, like, limit, no. like, infinity? No. That, that's why We are literally a size of, like, a grain of sand, like the whole planet is compared to, like, everything that's out there, if you really think about it, if that. Like, I've seen some pictures of uh, some, like, stars – that are like bigger than the sun and then they compare that like down to earth and stuff and earth is just like a little tiny dot you can't even and that's see. just one sun yeah it's crazy yep <laughs> so oh, it's that's wild because earth earth still seems pretty big when you're on it 
like traveling and stuff you're like wow that's so far away and then you look at it compared to stuff in space and you're like uh wow we are actually very small i feel like space is like the most humbling thing you can kind of learn some quick facts about or just look into a little bit yeah yeah no definitely watching a documentary on like nature space like just things bigger than you i feel like it's really important yeah no definitely it's kind of humbling and terrifying at the same time yeah (laughs) it really is oh gosh we're small compared to that but no for sure we're nothing nothing (laughs) but at the same time we're everything exactly amen brother oh yeah hell yeah yeah it'd be cool to prove that life is somewhere else yeah Yeah, that'd be interesting I, I just kind of assume it I don't know. I wonder the level of intelligence and then if it's existing at like the exact same time that we happen to be existing. There's gotta be yeah. life at some point and like somewhere. It's just weird to think about like nothing else existing but us. Like, like life wise, yeah. Yeah. Like, I mean I don't know. Growing up, like I've been super religious, so I wasn't even like, Oh no, like God just created us. But, I mean, I still believe in God, and I still have all my same beliefs pretty much. But I just wonder, like, yeah, he might have created us, but I wonder if there's, like, another planet out there that could have humans on it and might have just had the same upbringing we did or very different. So, I don't know. It's definitely a possibility. Like, imagine how cool it would be if we found, like, another species on that planet. Like, it would be really wild if, like, they were the exact same kind of species, but probability of that with evolution is probably really low i'd assume but yeah. especially like different circumstances on that planet and different struggles to like overcome plants being grown on a different planet pretty easily they would see like, that yeah like i don't know they've always said if we were ever to like live on any planet other than earth it would be mars would probably be like the closest one to earth they still it's not the same at all but like they have a few similarities that would make it safer than any other planet to live on so it's another elon musk topic yeah terraforming mars gotta have him on the show sometime yeah yeah he's coming on tomorrow actually oh sweet sweet funny you said that (laughs) hilarious it wouldn't surprise me man that guy does some random stuff sometimes (laughs) be awesome he went on joe rogan oh that's true yeah i forgot about that that's awesome it's an icon seems like a cool guy to chill with joe rogan and elon musk yeah talk about two people changing the world exactly Exactly. I think this podcasting thing is so cool. It's the amount of random bullshit you can learn just by like oh, sitting yeah. there listening to two people talking about whatever. Dude, we've talked about rainbow unicorn bangs. We've talked about self-driving cars. We've talked about Cheez-Its, fast food, weddings. It's everything. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's just, just a big, long uh, track just going all the way around. Movies, voice actors, exactly. your dad growing up in a small town. Yeah. No, for sure. What a bluff is. What a bluff is. Lie, lie detectors. I'm, I'm going to see what a definition of a bluff is because I'm curious. Because I've heard of a bluff. I didn't even realize it was like kind of like a mountain hill kind of thing. Let's see. Tommy Pickles, baby. <laughs> Rugrats. Dude, the one and only. He's a legend. My <laughs> a bluff? Um, one uh, use for the word is a steep cliff bank or promontory. So, okay, you did you did a pretty good description of it earlier. Yeah. So I, I can imagine. I can imagine. There's a place I'm thinking of back in St. Louis that reminds me of a bluff. Okay. It's like not a mountain, but a massive, very tall hill, and like very steep. Have you ever driven like on the way to Branson? Absolutely. So over to- Those are bluffs. Kinda, yeah. Those are kind of what it's like. Mine was just like higher up. Ooh, this was taller. But okay. no, it's it's basically the same kind of concept. They're not necessarily mountains, but they're kind of steep and still hills. So. so let me ask you this: Did you w- did you have to like build your roads on the type of roads that go like kind of like zigzag down the hill? Do you know what I'm talking um, about? Yeah, no, I know what you're talking about. The way it was is like there's a bridge from like the St. Robert area st robert missouri to the dixon Mm -hmm. side where i was on and you go across that and then there's like this uh road highway 28 that you just go on and you kind of do that going up the hill and everything and then you go up a little bit and then take a right onto the highway 
mm. I lived on. It was just kind of a small highway, but no, it like went up so high that it was like right there. It was weird. Okay, weird. okay. Yeah, I don't know how to explain it any better than that, but yeah. Some of those hills scare me. Oh, yeah. No, I mean, they didn't even have guardrails until a couple of years ago on going up those hills, and that always amazed me because, you know, someone could easily just go off the side and just fall into the valley. So I was like, why have we not Why have we not put this, implemented this yet? Because it's a very highly po- uh, possibility that that could happen. Yeah, right? Yeah. That's that's scary. I know this, this girl I uh, have met recently, and she might actually come on the podcast tomorrow. Oh, sweet. Oddly enough, but awesome. she uh, she drove off a mountain because she's from Colorado. Oh, gosh. And she was, like, reaching down to get something and drove off a mountain, and her car was, like, completely totaled. And but she was I okay. forgot I forgot the details, but she, like, it sounded like she barely survived. She was, like, covered in blood, like, dragging oh herself. Gosh. Do you imagine if a bear just came along, smelt that blood? Like, she, Dude. she had to drag herself to a place that she was actually, like, seen off the side of the road or something. It I'm going to butcher the story, but it was absolutely insane. Because whenever I'm driving in Colorado, I'm, like, paranoid of, like, because that's high consequences. That's higher yeah. consequences than any roads I'm used to. I mean, yeah. you could fall off the, drive off the side of the road. That sucks. But if you drive your, your fucking car off a cliff. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's game over pretty much at that point most of the time. Did you imagine that just being airborne? Dude. You drop, like, even, even, like, 30 feet would be super scary. But, like, to fall just straight off a mountain. That's that's terrifying. <laughs> your that car's terrifying. flipping and shit. You're just hopefully you're buckled up, but gosh, if you weren't buckled, that's terrifying. Yeah. More. But I bet at that in that instance, the amount of adrenaline that's going through your body, you probably don't even realize what happen what's happening because of the shock that's going through you right now. But that's crazy to think about. It's crazy. But she was she was okay. She. Yeah, she's she she's fine now. Wow. So I don't know the full details, but that's crazy. Could not that's imagine. Wild. No, no, that's wild. Should we talk about puppies? <laughs> something, <laughs> something <Yeah>. more <laughs> happier than that. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's not hard to beat. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> Speaking of puppies, what kind of dog guy are you? What kind of breed do you prefer? I feel like everybody's got their breed. I don't know if I, I always like beagles growing up. Beagles are pretty cool. Do you like beagles? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if they're my my favorite, but they they're shed too much. They're definitely up there. They're pretty cute. What would you say yours is? That's that's tough. Because there's a lot. Of, I I'd say my top ones are like golden retrievers, um, like a French bulldog, uh, shepherds, any kind of the shepherd dogs, Australian, German shepherd. I don't know. Those are probably my top ones. That okay. I pick, but I labs I like a lot too. You could you could get like a polyamorous relationship with your dogs. Yeah, I mean, true. like you're like I like I like Chihuahuas because they're the best to cuddle at cuddle with. I like Golden Retrievers because they're fun to play fetch with. I like this dog because I I'm into show dogs. Yeah, and I'm weird and I enjoy pampering my dog and giving it a better diet than I eat, and yeah. then making it super fucking pretty. By the way, I have a daughter who is also <laughs> into those toddlers and tiaras. She's on, she's a star on the TV yeah. show. So, sister wives dog edition. you will see this fall. <laughs> Check it out. <laughs> <laughs> but you could. Yeah, I mean, that's the cool thing about dogs. Is you can get as many as you fucking want. Like, yeah. There's this girl I know that has like eight dogs. Like no exaggeration. Oh it's ridiculous. I, I haven't seen it, but she took a picture. I'm like, you have that many dogs. Like, how do you how do you raise that many? I mean, right. Dogs are awesome, but they can be a handful sometimes. So it's. That's impressive that she can do that. Get I, one for every purpose. Yep, exactly. Exactly. No, I, I couldn't do that, but that's awesome. That's awesome. I'd say two or three would be my max that I would want in a house by myself. Same, <laughs> same. <laughs> and you're ridiculous if you want more than three. Yeah. <laughs> that but you just really love impressive. dogs. That's impressive at that point. <laughs> what void are you? If they're all inside dogs, by the way, because most of her are, like, outdoors. She lives on, like, some land. But, uh. If if they're all inside dogs, what void are you filling? I mean, <laughs> you're, you're yeah. filling some void. <laughs> That's true. I don't know. That's a good good question. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea, man. It's funny to think about. Yeah. You hear always hear about crazy cat ladies, but you never really hear about crazy dog ladies. I feel like, but they're they're out there too. 
so I wonder if it's because people have a negative stigma towards cats. Possibly. I, I've always wondered that. And I feel like a lot of people attribute the dog to being the masculine and do- like cats being the feminine as far as like house pets go. Yeah. And then maybe they just attribute it to like old women with cats. I don't know. Yeah. Cats are probably easier to take care of than a dog because cats can just go in the litter box instead of them having to take them outside to do their business. Mm-hmm. But I'm definitely a dog person, but I don't hate cats or anything. But I think that's probably what it is. Thank you for clarifying because that's actually really necessary to say. Yeah. People absolutely. assume shit. If you say you like dogs and they think you hate cats. Yeah. And if you like cats, they think you hate dogs. Yeah. It's n- no, we can live in a world of unity. Exactly. Yeah. Man. There's that motivational speaker that's, that's again. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Hashtag E L E. Everybody love everybody. That's right. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Nah, dude. Dogs all the way though, but cats are okay. Yeah, agreed with everything you said. Dogs all the way, cats are okay. That's a new motto. Gonna put that on canvases. I don't know which one. Would you rather fight? Oh, what's a me? Uh, would you rather fight one pit bull? Or eight cats. One pit bull. Because cats can be vicious. They they don't give up and they're just clawing at you and hissing at you. Pit bulls are pretty rough and they're strong. But I feel like it would be a lot easier to get a pit bull down on the ground than it would to be eight cats just gnawing at you and slicing at you, getting on your arms and head and whatever. So I, I'd say I'd take on the pit bull. True. I don't know what I would do. I know I know pit bulls have like some I, it might be the strongest bite force out of any dog. I wouldn't be surprised. They have a strong bite force. It's it's pit bulls or something else, but they're they're top three of all the dogs. And I don't know. I don't know what I would do. I hate I hate the negative stigma on pit bulls too. That they're all just mean and vicious and everything. I've met some sweet pit bulls. I have too. Absolutely. No, I think I think it all comes down to like how you raise them is the main thing. If you raise them to be vicious, they're going to be vicious. If you raise them to be nice, they're going to be nice. I think that's with any dog, though, really. Um, no, I I know uh, this one guy from work. He has a pit bull, and uh, his name is Capone, and he's just like a big, fat cow, <laughs> basically. Aww. He's a pit bull, but when you see him, you wouldn't think it because he just starts wagging his butt, wagging his tail, and just comes over to you and hops on the couch and just lets you pet him. It's a beefy stomach. dog. Yeah. He, he could be terrifying if you didn't know what he was like. But, no, he's a sweet guy, and he's a pit bull. So, oh yeah, sweet, sweet pup. It's like the AK-47 thing. People like to stigmatize certain things. Oh, yeah. It's the, yeah. the dogs make more sense, but, like, I don't know. It, I agree. I agree. It's probably just how you raise them. Yeah. Maybe they have more element of crazy. Like, they're, they're more capable of being, like, a crazy dog. Didn't, didn't some state outlaw pit bulls? Or like a city outlaw pit bulls? Oh, probably. There's been a lot of talks for states and cities that could outlaw them or have like regulations on them that other dogs might not have. Like you know, have to that scares me. That scares me because if Pokemon were real, there would be outlaws on those. Yeah. You want to be able to own a Pikachu, and I would love to own a Pikachu. I would too, man. Pika Pika, man. Exactly. Crazy world. I would own I would own a Pichu before I own a Pikachu though. I think that would be I adorable. Blame I don't blame you. Speaking of Pokemon Go, did you see that there's a new Harry Potter game that's like Pokemon Go? No shit. Yeah. You like catch creatures and stuff and you use your wand and some spells to do it. It's pretty dope. Is your wand referring to your is it referring to your dick? Uh I mean for some people it could be. <laughs> if you get the rated R version of the app. But okay. No, or I know or NC-17, get. I guess, that rating. But no, if you get the PG, it's just a regular wooden stick. Boring. I know. Who wants Boring. That? Who wants that? <laughs> <laughs> Who wants that? Uh, oh, that's know. pretty cool. Yeah, I checked it out. I've played a little bit. It's pretty pretty cool. What's that What's that called? Like, interactive kind of gameplay. Like, what, isn't that, there's a name for that, right? Yeah. It's like AR, VR, maybe. Is it is that virtual reality that's classified? I don't know if it'd be classified as it, but I feel like it's kind of the same. I feel like it's like the segue to VR. Yeah, because you can still like use your camera for it, and there could be like something pop up there. So I don't, I don't know what that would be called. How much of the how much of VR do you think will be like in like real places? Because I always imagine VR, and this is just like the off the little I know about it, but like I always imagine you're like living from like a first person point of view, and it feels like you. Like sentient, like you as, a, or, or you could be playing a character, 
but you're pretty much controlling the character, whoever it is, but you're blasted off into like another world. But like, I've never thought about it. If you're like, if you can like go to a park and like fight zombies, you know, like, could you imagine somebody running around the park with just fucking like a mask on and they're just like, like, "Ah." yeah, (laughs) swinging at people, shooting them. No, I don't know. I never thought about that. That'd be, be a wild time. The first people (laughs) to do that would look crazy. They'd look either passionate or crazy, one of the two, but I think it'd be I think I'd be like weirded out the first time I ever saw somebody just running around. <laughs> Mine and then uh Harry's his roommate and my sweet mate from freshman year, he had a VR headset and he would always get on it in our suite and he'd like leave the door wide open for everyone to like walk by the hallway and see what he was doing. <laughs> was like, dude, please. <laughs> Cause he'd be like, What the like act like he was about to fall off a building or something and i'd sometimes just go over there and like blow on his neck and he'd (laughs) get it but no that was a that was an interesting time he intentionally left the door open it was always open okay (laughs) i don't know why i totally thought that was going in the direction where like he left his bedroom door open and he's like whacked off or something (laughs) thought it it wouldn't surprise me the guy was in the bathroom for a pretty long amount of time so vr porn you never know I wouldn't put it past him. But, yeah. No, if you ever want to hear some horror stories, talk to Harry about <laughs> his uh, freshman year living experience. Really? Yeah. That bad? It was pretty rough. Yeah. Yeah, I know the the guy pooped on our bathroom wall. So, kind of, kind of gross. There was, like, brown splatter right next to the toilet. I don't know how Your he... Your freshman d- roommate? My, well, Harry's roommate, my sweet mate, yeah. Okay. Why would anybody ever do I don't that? I don't know why. My main question is how. Because I've, I've had some pretty gnarly turds come out, not going to lie. Mm-hmm. And uh, Do you quit bragging? Dude. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, but I just – I don't understand. Like, that would have to be like a projectile crap session, you know, just slinging out of your, your butt. Like, I don't know. Kind of a gross topic to think about, but – it's honestly kind of impressive at the same time that he was able to do that. Yeah. Projectile, shoot that. Yeah, he didn't clean it up right away either. We, like, noticed it. It's and a really uh, bizarre thing to do. Like, there's no <laughs> – I don't see any humor element in that unless yeah. – maybe I don't – I just don't know what I think, I think he just really it. had to go that bad, and it was just Jesus that Christ. consistency. Harry said he heard how you, it. How do you make it that close? I have no idea because I've had times where I've made it pretty close, but, you know, I still am able to get the job done. I, I don't think I, I pretty much stand over the toilet too. Like I don't face any other direction. Like I don't I don't like like if this is the toilet seat, I don't start from like back here and then pull down my pants and then twist one eighty and then sit down. Like I, I think what I do is I walk up, I back the truck up, spread them legs, pull my pants down, and then sit down. Yeah. No like I'm already in position. Yeah, you're ready for however long it's gonna take for you exactly. to do business. This this was like the toilet's right here, walls right here, poops right here. That's bizarre. Like, yeah, I don't know. I don't know how it happened, but uh, no, he didn't clean it up right away, and uh, we didn't know how to confront him. I will it. say on the on the topic of projectile pooping, there is a Missouri State student who has gotten famous. Famous being defined as sixty thousand followers on Instagram. Wow! And he makes poop videos. He's met Stevo. Oh my god! He was my next door neighbor when I was living in the frat house. That's wild. His That's name is Max Savage. Damn. Well. His Instagram is like Max Savage sixty nine. But no joke, this dude literally just does poop videos all the time, and like he projectile shoots this shit out of his butthole. Literally, <laughs> it's disgusting. It's the most impressive. repulsive thing you will ever see. He like posts pictures of his poop on there. He like <laughs> four thousand likes. It's like. It is so gross, but so, like, ingenious at the Talented. same time. You know what he, like, eats to be able to do that? Or? Well, I've been told by other sources, not him directly, but he will, like, eat, like, a ton of Taco Bell, I believe it is. And he ate something else that's, like, the Tory. Maybe it was, like, beans or something like that. But something something that's, like, infamous for making you shit. But it w- w- will blow your mind. And if you have the stomach to be able to, like, witness it and not puke, if you're like if you're an insane person like me and you're capable of watching it and not puking after like six videos in a row, uh, I I can't watch them anymore. But I I did watch a few. I I took the binge, <laughs> I took the plunge and watched a few. But uh, 
he he like will like go for distance. Like he'll get up on top of like cabinets and it'll drop a good like five feet. Oh and he makes gosh. it in the toilet. Like it's it's like how do you calculate that? Yeah. How do you get how do you do this enough to get skilled at it? He's like getting a protractor out and like having all these angles and like <laughs> algorithm behind it. He's like measuring the fucking like the the getting the X preg- Y values in there and then like <laughs> Okay, it's gonna be at a seventy-two degree angle for this the shot. I think I can this. get the arch a good three inches, which will it, delay I can the give fall. It about this many newtons of force. This <laughs> is coming out. It's impressive. I can I can <laughs> measure that by the, my stomach pressure right now. Yeah. <laughs> and the amount of Taco Bell I ate earlier. I, t- I took I my last poop video I ate four, but I ate five to up the pressure so I could up the frequency. Oh, absolutely. And then up the distance. Question though, did you add any did you add any sauce? Uh, add any Taco Bell sauce? I, maybe, okay. maybe. I know he's he's done like other videos where he will, he'll, he will smoke a blunt, like take or he'll he'll do like a roach thing, like he smokes mm-hmm. it and then eats it and then he oh, eats an entire raw egg, and then he'll like chug a beer, and then he put hot sauce in his eyes, like like oh Taco gosh. Bell like fire sauce in his eyes, dude. That is painful. That's painful just to think about. Yeah, I don't know how you do that. Oh, he put, I think he chewed, like swallowed dip spit as well. Ew! It was oh it was gosh. pretty much just a lot of random fucking things all in a row, and all for the point of going viral. I mean, you do what you have to do. You make some money off doing something random. I was on the I think Instagram the other day, and there was like a meme page I followed that screenshotted all these videos this guy has posted on Pornhub. And they're not even sex videos or anything. It's just, like, him opening up the door and staring at you. And then, like, him getting food out of the cabinets and stuff. Uh, and he has, like, thousands and thousands of views on there. I'm like, that guy's getting paid to put those videos on Pornhub. Not even doing that kind of stuff and just getting paid for it. That's so, crazy. Yeah. Not a bad idea to think about. Not sexual at all. No. It's literally just, like, him opening up the door and, like, staring at you or, like, telling you to have a good day. <laughs> and it's just on Pornhub. <laughs> I've never looked him up, but I saw that, and I was like, hmm, I wonder how many views that has now. That's funny. You'd think there'd be some, like, certification process to yeah. get verified this to make sure. This wasn't sexual you're... enough. Yeah. <laughs> no, dude. I think anything goes on the side. <laughs> this wasn't sexual enough. Yeah. <laughs> it's like the opposite of, like, a PG-13 versus, like, an R movie. It's like, not enough sex. Yeah. We need more. <laughs> Unapproved. <laughs> That'd be awesome. <laughs> no, that's crazy. I'm... I thought about making some videos like that just to see if they get some views, but I mean, get some a money. Great day. I mean, you get money off of it just through like the advertisements that would probably be around it. So why not? Why not? Just do your daily routines and get paid for it. Just film it. So there you go. I like it. Move I like over, it. I've never over. thought about doing that. That's move really over funny. YouTube. Pornhub's a new uh, blog. Exactly. Blog so. Jake Paul is going to be posting yep. shit on Pornhub now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It wouldn't surprise me. It wouldn't surprise <laughs> me one bit. <laughs> Dude, there was somebody who – do you know who Vi- Vitaly ZD is? It sounds familiar, but I can't put a face to it. He's uh, he's pretty much – he's like one of the main pranksters on YouTube. But he he has a porno. He was like involved with some porn wow. agency. I forgot who it was, but I think he has one porno. I haven't seen huh. it, but I saw it featured before, so – if you're curious, I forgot where I saw that. I think I think I saw like the source somewhere else. And I looked it up to make sure it was true. Yeah, and it was. Wow. And he had a lot of interviews on there as well. Like he would like it'd be like him and one porn star, and they'd like interview people at some porn star convention thing. Huh. Yeah. That's kind of kind of wild to think about, but I mean, hey, get some money out of it. So. Sure Do you ever date a porn star? I don't know. <laughs> it's they, a hard are question. They, to are answer. they are they currently a porn star while I'm dating them? Or were they a former porn star? Okay, this makes it a little bit tougher. Okay, they they quit two years ago, but they did it for four years, and they're they're like total babe. Okay, let's say this: your dream girl did porn in the past, and she's not just like like it's not like she just did porn. Like she's Same. she's she's not like top ten, but like she was in her prime, like top fifty. Like people know who the fuck she is, and they've seen like. Uh, millions of guys have seen your girlfriend naked and having sex, but she's like super smart. You guys just have a really awesome vibe connection, whatever you want to say. You're really compatible. Uh, obviously, the sex is gonna be really good. But <laughs> y- again, as many guys as they want, anybody who meets her, 
parents included, anybody, they, they will know these things about her. I, if it's been a few years, sure. I'd at least give it a shot. I don't know if it's going to be my wife in the future or anything, but you never, you never know you could get to say that. That'd be good, be good for some bar talk. You'd be like, yeah, I want to see a porn star. And they'd be like, dude, who? <laughs> like, so and so. And they're like, what? Do it for the story, dude, baby. Dude, I remember her back in middle school, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's so hot. No, something like that. I, if you're compatible, I mean, why not at least try it? Because, I mean, people have some crappy stuff for their past. Everyone has crappy stuff from their past that they don't really want to talk about. But Hers was just documented. Just, yeah, exactly. So don't hold that over their head if you're compatible with them. Who knows, dude? There might be other people that are like, like other girls that you'll date that are were way more in the closet about it of being like sexual freaks. Yeah. That's you true. know? That's true. That's a, that's a good topic to bring up. You can be super promiscuous and be a female and not get caught. It's so I feel like it's so easy for girls not to get caught. Yeah, I I heard a quote one time, or somebody referenced this. It was like girls and guys cheat just as much, but girls are better at not getting caught. They are. They're they're smart with what they with what they do for sure. Girls, I think we should just hire an FBI full of women because those chicks can find out information so <laughs> well <laughs> compared to guys. That is a good. I've never thought about that. Like for real, I I remember. <laughs> Freshman year, some girls that lived on my floor, they uh, went and watched a soccer game at Missouri State, and they were like, "Yeah, he's so hot. I'm gonna, I'm gonna follow him." And they like had their whole team followed by the end of the night. And I said, "How did you find out what all their names were? Because they didn't have like a handout like the roster or anything." They said, "Well, we went to the location that one picture was taken of a guy that we followed that's already on the team. Then we went to what? Yeah, we went and looked at pictures that were taken at that location." And then we looked at guys that were tagged in there, and then we followed them and got on their profile and then found other guys that were on the team that were in their tagged photos. And this went down this long line of how to how they find, like, every single guy on the team. I was like, guys would not think that far ahead, I feel like. Well, well guys will, but those but, are considered creeps. Yeah. And girls won't give those guys a chance. That That's, like, creepy behavior, but, like, it's yeah. if a girl did that to me, I'd be happy. Like, I'd be flattered. Yeah, I'd be like, wow, you went through all that trouble just to – find me that'd be awesome wow either like i'm really attractive in the eyes of this particular girl <laughs> or she's looking for some d yeah one of the two i don't know what never it know. is never know <laughs> that is that's weird because girls would definitely find that creepy but like i bet most guys would be happy that happened to them yeah no absolutely i w- i'd be flattered if someone went through all that trouble to do that but no, i mean it's true women i feel like they can find out stuff way more clearly than guys could and faster than the guy could just because i don't know they they're pretty smart they're pretty smart in a lot of ways like that and they uh i feel like they wouldn't give up as easily as a guy would if that makes any sense what do you mean like i feel like women when they see something they want they're determined to get that compared to guys in a, in a way not saying that guys aren't but i feel like more women are more like dead set on getting what they want compared to a guy that's like, uh, if I find out now, I find out now. If I find out later, I find out later. Oh, you're sure like s- certain information. Like, did yeah. he cheat on me? Like yeah. girls will get to the bottom yeah. of it quicker than guys will. Yeah. 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 And I feel like, I feel like, uh, it's more like normal or like accepted for girls to be like, Hey, do you know anything about this guy? And like to like link up like that and oh, get yeah. as much information and network. But like if, if one of my friends, unless it's, like, a good friend, if he came at me and he's like, hey, yo, like, did do you think she cheated on me? I'd be like, I don't know. Like, I, I just don't know what I would do to, like, look into it. I, Because I, I wouldn't know. If he if he doesn't know, I probably wouldn't know. Yeah, and if you ask, like, one of the uh, girls that's, like, friends with the girl you were trying to find out information on, they'd be like, I, I don't know anything. And then they'd be like, yeah, Jordan was asking about you. And then they'll be like, oh, so he must be asking Jordan stuff to find out. And then they would all be like, don't say anything. With girls, they, I feel like they can just get a, a information out of people pretty easily. Girls are better with that. I've never thought about that. Most, I mean, most of the time, it's true. It's true. They're pretty smart with that kind of stuff. I agree so. with what you said. Women can be very, very nice, like some of the sweetest, most compassionate people you ever meet, or they can be manipulative. They can, be, can be savage. For yes. Sure. For sure. But tricky. Yeah. Tricky. Yeah. Very, very some furtive. Of them, some of them can give you a real mind game as to what – 
you need to do <laughs> for them. That's scary. Yeah, for sure. Or like exciting. So. I don't know. Maybe that, I like the crazy you girls. You never know. Everyone has their own. Everyone has their own little kink. <laughs> so you never know. It is weird how like a lot of times we're attracted to people that are that can hurt us the most. Yeah. There's like that element of like, I want this to work. I want yeah. this thing to work. I know I've experienced it. I've experienced it. Yeah. No, for sure. I don't know. Love is a pretty crazy thing, man. Or when you think you're in love, at least. Because I've had friends that have dated chicks for their first girlfriends, and it's really it's hurt them in the moment. And now they're like, why was I so upset about that? But I think those first loves are the ones that are some of the hardest to get over. Because you get more realistic. You look yeah. at it more pragmatically as like time goes on. You're like, well, you know, maybe these are just certain emotions. I'm not even fully certain that I like this girl. I also like... I don't know where I'll even be a year from now. I might even stay in the city. Like you just get, you just get more rational about it. I feel. Yeah, and I feel like with the first first loves, that's all you've ever known is dating that person. You don't know what dating anybody else really is like, or seriously dating somebody else like that is like. So you're like, well, if it ends, my life's just over. Sometimes because you're like, well, that was who I was supposed to be married to. You have all these thoughts that are going into your head, and in the end, it's not. It's not the end. But at the time, you're like, oh man my life's over i should just give up and it's like nah it's called one and itis baby yep <laughs> one and itis <laughs> yeah i agree I, I think the concept of a soulmate is bullshit i think it's bullshit yeah no because i mean you can fall in love and or at least think you're in love but that's just not a person that you need to be with you know and there's think about how many people you can fall in love with too oh yeah like there's there's no way that one girl is like destined for you i mean i think it's just like some people are more compatible, and then the people that you happen to find that you can actually make it work with, and that's a beautiful thing. I'm not bashing on that. Like, if you can, if you can make monogamy work for, like, 50 years like some people have, that's crazy. And yeah. kudos to you. I tip my hat to you. That's awesome. But uh, the idea that that person was made for you and they're the only one for you, you maybe could have made that work with, like, I don't know, like 10,000 females walking this planet. No. I mean, it would have been a different relationship dynamic, and you would have had a different connection, maybe like different things about them. But like, I feel like you can learn to love a lot of people. And yeah, the thought no. that there's only one person out for you, or out there for you, is kind of ridiculous. Yeah, no, I I agree. My parents uh, actually are divorced. My mom, and my dad, and uh, I feel like they never were truly like happy together, and they weren't. I mean, they were in love but i feel like it just was kind of a getting distant as the years went on and then after they got divorced my mom met a guy here and that's why we moved here and then now my dad is married to a woman in ohio and they're both way happier with those other people than they were together are you and are you happier in the long term for both of them yeah no, how absolutely. things worked out good yeah. for you good yeah because no. my mom's happy and my dad's happy and they they just seem to be in better moods when they're happy of course so no it ended up being better. It was kind of kind of hard growing up uh, in some ways because we would have to split the custody out. My mom got us through most of the year, and then my dad would get us in the summertime and at Christmas. So having to go to his uh, his house in Pennsylvania um, where he used to live, that was kind of hard because you'd have to you couldn't spend the summer with your friends playing baseball, going to like the pool or anything. You got to restart. Yeah. And it's hard to, like, make friends in another state for three months because, I mean, you're not going to stay in touch with them, really, most of the time. True, true. At least when you're a little kid, it's hard to kind of stay in touch in that way. But, no, that, that was probably the hardest thing was, like, splitting up the custody like that growing up. Mm -hmm. But, no, they're both happier, and I don't, I don't regret them getting divorced at all. I mean, I'm glad that they were together for my sake because here I am. But, no – over their sake, I think they made the right choice and they're a lot happier now and I think have better lives for themselves with other people. No, so, good for them. Good yeah, for them. Well, for sure. Good for you too because I, I know too. some people, they, they different kind of divorce dynamics really mess with them and also I, I'd imagine it's probably hard to like accept like the new parent at times depending on what point you are in life. Yeah. So. I'd say, I'd say it was hard for me when I was younger because I was around five when they four or five when they split up and okay. got divorced and then we moved out here when i was six so it was kind of hard to leave my friends that i grew up with in my long five years of life <laughs> <laughs> in ohio it was hard to say goodbye to them because i had never known anything new so i had to go i was starting i started kindergarten 
at in Dixon, and it was hard uh, hard for that because I didn't know anybody, so I was scared. I was like, oh, no. I didn't like my stepdad either at the time because I thought he was taking my mom away from me. Like, you, that's my mom. You don't right. – Yeah. He's an awesome guy. He's He's been there since I was six. I mean, he's wow. seen me through some tough stuff. Him and my dad have been both been pretty good, pretty good fathers for sure. Um, but no, he's seen it all, and I've grown to love the guy. But at the time, I was like, no, you get away from my mom. She's mine. Uh-huh. <laughs> and no, I think I was just a hard change. But I, I ended up fitting in pretty nicely in that small town environment. I feel like so growing up. I have a lot of friends growing up with people in that town, so I don't regret moving from Ohio to Missouri at all, and it's brought some really cool people into my life, too. Moving. Uh, yeah. Good for you. So good what for seemed, you, man. Yeah, what seemed bad at the time has been a blessing in disguise, for sure. So. And that's cool, too, to be able to see, like, some relationship dynamics. It's like, you know, my mom's a good person, my dad's a good person, but, like, to have that understanding from a younger age or, like, learn that over time to – like these these two are they're good people individually but together they're not so great yeah and then realize like oh it's like it's kind of about that connection as yeah. well that's the highly high very high importance in any relationship yeah so you kind of you probably like learn because i feel like as a kid it's cool to observe your parents dynamic and you kind of fantasize about well, whenever i get older whenever i get older yeah and you start thinking about like what your life would be whenever you're older yeah no it's weird to look back on like stuff I did a few years ago compared to like where I'm at in life now I'm like whoa I never would have expected me to be in the situation I'm at like I'm not in a bad situation or anything but I never would have expected to be friends with one of my sweet mates from college working at a movie theater uh, majoring in history education because that wasn't my plan originally like things just change as life goes on that's why uncertainties like sometimes I stress about the future unnecessarily and it's like, dude, like, I know there's a lot of uncertainty, but ultimately it's always going to be that way. And you you're, you can't predict yeah. everything. Like, no, if you would have, I don't know, you might have thought you were crazy if you're like, yeah, I'm work. you're going to be working at a movie theater a few years from now. Yeah. And yeah, maybe, maybe not. I mean, maybe you'd be like, okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sounds realistic. Okay. Yeah. No, no, it's, it's just crazy. Think about how everything like kind of falls into place. And like, if one thing had just been different, how different your life could have been. Like, if I hadn't been uh, sweet mates with Harry, he's one of my best friends here, um, my life would be completely different because uh, I wouldn't have made that relationship with him freshman year by living with him. I, uh, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah, no, I wouldn't have met him freshman year, done all that stuff. Freshman year also, I was supposed to be an RA um, in Hutchins. Well, spring semester, I kind of just – didn't really care about school, didn't even go, and it lowered my GPA down too much to where I wasn't allowed to have the RA job anymore. Uh, so I said, well, crap. And then that didn't work out, and that it, led to something that, else. That led to me uh, having to live with Harry or getting to live with Harry. That's that's pretty cool shit whenever guys. you, like, look at it from, like, the past. You're like, wow, that didn't work out, and I was pissed about that at the time, and then it happened to work out for me. Yeah, yeah. What I a know. beautiful thing. And then also, like, whenever you meet these people, like, whenever you shake hands with that first – or that person for the first time, it's not like you realize like, oh, this is going to be somebody that you know for the next month and then you're never going to see him again. Or like, yeah. this is somebody you're going to do a group project with or this is somebody you're going to do a group project with and become good friends with them and then you're going to start hanging out on Saturday nights and then they're going to introduce you to this girl that you're going to date and then you're going to learn about this girl and realize she's a psychopath and then that's going to make you appreciate this genre of women a lot more and then you you yeah tend to value the girl that you end up marrying more than you would have if you never had that psycho bitch. Yeah. I don't no. know. I don't know. I'm just no, throwing dude, out no, some random. Kind of, <laughs> I mean, because Harry was also the first person that went to uh, the Alamo, like out of most of my friends, besides Blake, my other roommate. Um, he was the first one. So if it hadn't been for him, I probably wouldn't have gone there. I would have still worked at the restaurant I was working at. Here. Dude, if you think about that, that's cool. Because uh, yeah. the job that you've met all these people at and whatnot was – ironically if you trace it back far enough was because your other job fell through yeah your ra job fell through which led you to meet somebody who two three years down the road or however long like you end up getting a job through and then that's a lot of your social dynamic that's your source of income like different life experience just because of that event no for sure 
it's it's weird to think about. I mean, it sucked at the time because I was like, oh, I'm gonna be losing all this money I could have saved while being an RA because they were gonna pay for my housing and everything. But at the same time, I'm like, I'd rather have good memories with all my friends while I'm still in college and can have those good times too. Respect. And uh, then get the job that it's pretty chill. Have some pretty chill people to work with. Become some of my best friends. There you go. Yeah. There you go. I like it. Yeah. Yeah, sure. it's kind of a that's that's an interesting thought because like. If you learn to uh, appreciate the good things about different options in life, like realize like, okay, you didn't get this job, but that's an opportunity for get it for you to get another job or it's an opportunity for you to, who knows, maybe even be unemployed for like a month and go do something cool that you wouldn't be able to do if you were employed or it, yeah, yeah. I mean, there sure. everybody's in a different situation, but like, it's cool to think that there's an opportunity and a loss and yeah. instead of looking at like a loss, it's like, Okay, this didn't work out, but what else can work out? What else can I give an attempt at going, yeah. going after? Who knows? No, there's. I don't listen to much country songs because that's just not really my cup of tea. But mm-hmm. there's a Luke Combs song called "When It Rains It Pours." Uh, he has a line that says, uh, "What I thought was going to be the death of me was my saving grace." Ooh, and I was like, that, that's kind of kind of true. That hits hard. There's, there's some stuff that you're like, "Oh, that sucks. That my life's over." And then you're like, "Oh, actually, if that hadn't happened, I wouldn't have had this happen." So I think it's pretty, pretty accurate for sure. Yeah. That's interesting. I like that yeah. thought a lot. I like that. Yeah. And everything, everything is going to end too. Every yeah. beginning is going to end and the end of that may be an opportunity for some other shit too. Yeah. Starting over yeah. fresh. I like that thought. I like that lyric. I like that lyric. Yeah. No, it's not it's a pretty good song. I don't like much country, but it's pretty good. Pretty good country song. I've gotten into country more lately, but yeah. I agree with you. I never liked it growing up too much. I, d- I, I there's a few people I I like that are modern, but I think it's more old country that I'm into if I'm listening to country. I okay. just feel, I feel like groups like Florida Georgia Line are too like mainstream stadium country. If that makes any sense, they all kind of sound the same. But there's a few people that kind of have a little bit of that older country sound to them too. At the same time, it can mix it with like new, newer stuff. If that makes any sense. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. I like so, Sam Hunt a lot. Sam Hunt's that, good. that's break up in a small town. Yeah, I like him because I feel like he does a good job of like mixing other genres into his music while still like maintaining that he's a country. He kind of does like the flow of rap in one of his songs. Yeah, I can't yeah. remember which one it is, but it's. I know what you're talking about. I'm trying to think. He kind of, he like talks and raps. It's like a subtle, but it has like the flow of rapping. That's why it reminds me of that. Yeah. I'm trying to think what that song title. I know what you're talking about. It was like the first time I ever heard him. I was like, dude, I can get with this. He was like the, the, uh, precursor. I don't even know if I'm using that word correctly. I shouldn't use that word. He was like the beginning form of Lil Nas dirt old town road. Yeah. No. He, like adding a little bit of rap, and then he like shakes up the country world a little bit, and then Lil Nas comes in, and then just kills it with the no, country dude. slash rap song, and yeah. everybody likes his music for about a week, and then yeah. <laughs> and then he's he never got be the heard. money for it, dude. He got super famous off of one song. That's crazy. Could you imagine like three minutes of you just took the time to document something and try to perfect it to the best of your ability? And that creative outlet just, like, has the ability to change your life. Just yeah. one fucking song catches something. Just, like, it, it plays upon something and becomes super dude, popular. Look at Rick Astley. The guy, the Rick Roll Never guy. gonna give you up. Yeah, dude. Never gonna let you down. Just wearing that trench coat snap. <laughs> <laughs> that video. Uh, dude, I, I wonder if he made any money <gasps> off of that. Because I feel like more people would have been like, oh, I've, I, let's go listen to that song. And then they would listen to that song after getting Rick Roll or something like that. That would make more people like know about it. So uh-huh. if he got more money around like 2007 when that was popular. I don't know. I've never thought about that. Yeah. yeah. He became a meme and then made money off of it. Yeah. There's no way he did it. I probably know that song because of him because I think my my teacher back junior year of high school would be like, you guys want to get Rick Rolled? Or he, he made a reference to Rick Rolled, and then he would play that song, and then it got really catchy. And then I heard it a few years later, and I looked it up immediately because I was yeah. like, "That's all, that, I love that song. Yeah, no, it's, it's a bop for sure. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. Oh, man. No, he, I, he's not fitting to his voice at all. Whenever you see no. the video, I was like, no way that's him. He's like yeah. a young dude. Yeah, no. I saw like a newer video of him like singing at a concert recently, and he looks really good for his age. Really, he's in his fifties, and he looks super young. Killing it! Wow. Yeah. He kind of has a baby face in the yeah. Uh, he I has a younger looking face. Too. Yeah. 
for sure. I didn't realize this, but Asians age well, if you're curious. Oh, my gosh, yes. They, like... You have, like, 60-year-olds that look like they're 30. Yeah. It's ridiculous. You're like, wait, what? They don't look like they have any, like, work done or anything either, too. It's impressive. Yeah. Props to them. Yeah. Wish I could do that. But, oh, that's wild. That's wild to think about. And they always live way longer than us, I feel like, most of them. Like in, oh, like, really? A, I feel like in at least in Asian countries, like Japan, China. I'm guessing diet. That's my guess. I, I think it probably is because there's, there's some that's like, oldest person in the world, dead at like 118 years old. And you're like, what? And they're always like in those Asian countries, I feel like. Oh, wow. Like, so if they're, if they're 108 years old and they're like – already asian and then they got the saggy skin like i mean th- there's already just a slit for them to see i don't think this is racist to say i'll say it <laughs> fuck it um but like that their their eyebrows gonna droop down and cover their slit i mean i've never thought about that but. and then maybe they gotta get like rubber bands on the top of their head that hold the top of their forehead skin up <laughs> and then <laughs> they wear like headbands all the time so that they keep the uh um, skin from sagging yeah <laughs> I've never thought about that. And they could they could take the headbands off at nighttime, and then it's like those sleepy masks, it's a natural a sleepy mask. It's a good invention. We should come up with that. We could patent on it. I just have to. What would we call it though? It's the it's the thing. Uh, sag no more. Sag no more. Sag no more. Maybe uh maybe you could use it on your balls too, like you pull your know. stomach skin. Have you, dude, have you ever? If you suck your stomach in, I don't know if you've ever taken the time to notice this, but if you look at your ball sack. Suck your stomach in, your ball sack will like retract. Like it, it pulls up probably a good inch. Wow. Swear to God, I've never, I've never, I've never done that. So I, or I've never paid attention while doing that. So homework assignment. There we go. Go home, look at your balls, <laughs> suck in, suck in. I'll, I'll let you know the results. I'm not talking like breath, like like literally like pull your, your stomach in. Like you're about to take an Instagram selfie, shirtless mirror picture, and you're sucking in. You could throw some flex in there if you want. Yeah, and. uh <laughs> You know, you're in a bikini on the beach, you're sucking in, and then just look at your ball sack, and it will it will retract upward. I'm also impressed that we're wearing a bikini, too. That takes yeah, a lot of it. self-confidence. <laughs> I forgot to do that. Exactly. <laughs> so, that's awesome. <laughs> it, uh, obviously, no bottoms, because you're looking at your balls. Yeah, so. of course, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. No, that's crazy. I would love to go to a nude beach. It'd be an interesting time. Just be weird to see people, like, not – caring about people seeing them naked yeah no shame yeah i feel like americans be like oh gosh people are looking at me and they're like they don't care they're not looking at you at all (laughs) just like yeah that would be that would be really interesting just to get comfortable with your body in that regard yeah dude i think i could get comfortable with it i would totally walk around naked on a new beach why not the only problem i would have with that is sand already gets in all of the cracks and crevices of your body Mm. so i feel like naked you would definitely have a lot more sand than usual good point but i'm still i'm still all for it i feel like whenever i think of those places i think of everybody wearing bottoms but i i pretty much just imagine girls not wearing tops yeah i mean mean, i'm assuming some people walk around naked but that'd probably be because i'd imagine it's not super comfortable to wear a bra all the time oh no yeah so like maybe you want to take that off but like your bottoms you're like no let's protect everything exactly no yeah, I don't know. Be a freeing experience. <laughs> True. I feel like all those European old guys wear those speedos, so it probably wouldn't be that much of a change for them. There you go. So, oh man, I couldn't do it. I couldn't wear a speedo. Those European old guys are the same old Americans that are completely naked whenever you walk in the locker room, and then you feel obligated to be like, "Oh," yeah. and, then, and then, but you don't want to be like they just verbal that, about they it. They have that leg propped up on that bench in the locker room, and they're just. Drying their ball sack off. Exactly. Like, okay. You know what they're <laughs> doing? They're sucking their stomach in and looking at their balls yeah. go up and down. Yeah, they want to see Suck in, push out. Anything. Suck in, push out. Yeah. That's a workout in itself right there. So, And their they're retract, the, the distance of their balls going up and down is a lot more because it's saggier. Yeah. It's like, so a, that, it's like a bungee cord. It's like, well. Exactly. Well, that's wild to think about. I think they use the same material, actually, as like old men ball sacks as they use in bungee cords that makes sense so that's what you're trusting with your life whenever you drop off that bridge well i feel like it's a pretty safe uh safe material to use i'm trusting it yeah i mean it survived 70 years of sun or probably not sun actually 
unless they're going on those nude beaches in the sun. It it survived seventy years of being an old man. All the times it's been scratched. Oh my gosh. Those are just building up calluses. I'm gonna I'm gonna challenge you next time you're in a gym locker room and you see a naked old guy, go up to him and be like, Hey man, random question. Can you suck in your stomach really hard and I wanna see if your nut sack retracts? And it will. And it will. Well, we gotta see if he lets you. I'd be impressed it. if he didn't know that over seventy years of life. Like if I could teach him something about his own body. That'd be wild. That's somebody that could have given my parents life. I'm teaching them something about human sexuality and yeah. the retraction of ball sacks. I would I, be a wild time. I, so challenge accepted. Okay, I'll do it. I want. Yeah. You don't have. To I'm re- not doing that. <laughs> okay, I was gonna say you don't have to record the guy if you're if you're doing it, but I want to see your reaction while you're asking him. You know, <laughs> picture of your face. I have a strict rule when I'm in the uh, public setting. Which, by the way, those are public bathrooms. When I'm in a public locker room slash bathroom and there is an old man in there i don't look and i don't talk to them yep and that is my rule and i think i i think i'm pretty i feel pretty uh pretty certain that i'm gonna be thoroughly following through with that for the rest of my life so. yeah no it's once i until i'm that old man actually yeah yeah <laughs> until i'm <laughs> until i become what i've despised then you're just gonna be having your towel around you going hey guys you want to know something pretty cool <laughs> you suck in all this air your ball sack retracts exactly and then they're like there's some crazy old guy <laughs> in the locker room he's talking about vietnam and his ball sack <laughs> yeah. to calm down <laughs> i think oh, vietnam man. was way before his time but he's still annoying i think that's the old man we should all strive to be <laughs> i recorded him on my iphone 21 yep <laughs> it's got a hologram coming out of it me and you both, man. Me and okay. you both. I'm down. Then it's not awkward. We're doing it together. Yeah. You know? No, we're buddies. We're buddies doing it together. Exactly. <laughs> then we're not crazy old men. We're just two crazy old men. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's a wild time. Might as well team up. <laughs> where, where do you think that age is, though? Whenever you're, like, an old dude and you just get to the point where, like, you're like, fuck it. I'm getting completely naked in this, this all men <laughs> locker room that's open to the entire public. And nobody wants to see this saggy skin, but I don't care. I also don't care to voice my political opinions as verbally and as loud in public at all points in time. There's I'd probably say, a correlation between the two. I'd say right around retirement age for most people, 65, 70, however okay. long they want to stay working. But cause at that point, they don't have to impress an employer. I mean, they've already got their wife usually. They don't have to impress them. Just let it all go. I mean, you don't really have to impress anybody anymore. So just let it all run free and – the rest will do its job. I wonder what the main causes of making somebody just not give a fuck, like, the most. <laughs> like, what do you think that would possibly be? I don't know. It's like, there's, what, some, what? there's some grumpy old men out there. Yeah, right? I just don't care. I once had an old guy yell at me for slicing his roast beef too thin at a deli I used to work at. And I was like, like, what do you mean? Like, what is this? And I'm like, oh, sir, you want some roast beef? I cut you half a pound of roast beef. And he's like, I want it thicker than that. I'm like, okay, well, I can recut it. It's not a problem. It's like, Ugh. interesting. No, and like, it's like you've done enough already. And just took it out of my hands. I was like, who hurt you? Like, <laughs> <laughs> where, where, who hurt you enough to get mad over roast beef being sliced too thin? But there's people. I feel there. like that's not even not giving a fuck. I feel like that's just being an asshole. Yeah. No, exactly. But I feel like for a lot of them, they kind of coincide with each other true, most true. of the time but there's some nice old guy they're just like who cares true <laughs> they all have a high-pitched voice for some reason <laughs> <laughs> oh, the man. grumpy ones are the ones with the deep voices yeah there you go they're, they're country boys <laughs> <laughs> honestly uh, if, if you're down to wrap this up i am how, how long have we been going damn it's on this is almost two hours oh my gosh i did not realize that like 30 minutes yeah that was wow i'm, I'm getting less and less surprised because the time flies by but that that surprised me. That like genuinely surprised me because I went an hour and forty five minutes the other day and I checked it and I, same deal. I thought it was half an hour. Oh my gosh! Yeah. So like now it's like it felt like half an hour. I agree, but like I don't know. I I just like I don't even yeah think no, any, sure. like I expect. I was expected to be way more than it feels like. Yeah. No, I did not feel that long at all. That's wild. Because I've been making a point to like. I mean, I could look over at any point in the podcast, but I I don't. Like I usually try to not break eye contact or. Yeah, I just don't look at it, and for that yeah, reason, exactly, because exactly, yeah. you get lost in the conversation. Yeah, that's wild. That is wild, because when I was coming on here, I had never like 
looked at up your YouTube channel or anything before, and uh-huh. I, I looked at it, I was like, some of these are two and a half hours long, some of these are two hours. I was like, how how the hell is this even possible? I was like, I'm thinking like a 30 minute podcast, and you're like, yeah, we might be on the shorter side of like an hour, and I was like, <laughs> what? <laughs> like that's crazy. Hour 45 later. Hour 45 later, yeah. Which by the way, yeah, my uh, the reason I was supposed to like fell through. So like I was even being, I was like, if I can not be conscious of the time, then I'm going to like most yeah. of the time. Yeah, no, definitely for sure, man. For sure. Well, do you have any last words? Anything else in your mind? Just uh, thanks for taking the time to do a podcast. Enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you Dude, for taking the time to do a podcast. I Hell yeah. Come back on here. It's Hell yeah. Fun. It's been fun. Dude, sure. we'll, we'll have to. I, I would love to get you and Harry. And I'm so happy you were like still down because a part of me was like, I was like, I know Trent really wants to do this. Oh, yeah. And like, I knew, like, I, I was like, I know, like, I want to get him on. And two, like, it's really cool that you took interest because not many people ask me. Oh really? Like you're, I think you're like the hundred twenty one, hundred hundred twenty first guest, and I believe it's something like I would say less than five people have asked me. Oh my gosh! So like I usually that's, ask the people. Like that's really cool. That's no, really that's cool a, to me. That's crazy to think about. No, I I'm definitely down for this. I've never done one before. So hey, gotta get some experience there. But no, if you had Harry and I on here, it would uh, it'd be a good time. I'm so down. I'm yeah. so down. <laughs> yeah, the circumstances so. that he's not able to kind of suck, but true. Tough guy though. Yeah, yeah. Tough for sure not handle some of the stuff he's been dealing with lately so really yeah family family uh death death in the family oh yeah yeah that specific yeah 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 no. tough guy though good dude yeah i wouldn't know you if it weren't for harry so that's true shout out another thing i w- we'll wrap it up here in a second but i uh forgot when we were living together harry and i thought like the worst things of each other when we just saw each other's facebook profiles oh no shit yeah like he thought I was going to be this really, really douchey guy because um, my – like, I had my senior pictures on there on my Facebook profile, and one of them's me sitting on a ladder on a railroad track just having my hair – my hands go through my hair just looking all serious at the camera. He's like, this guy's going to be a total douche. <laughs> F this. And I saw him, and it said education at homeschooled. And nothing against You're homeschooled like, kids. You're like fucking weirdo. Yeah, but uh, there, there's a lot of cool homeschooled kids, but a lot of them – are kind of socially awkward, so I was like, "It's a stereotype for a reason." Yeah, I'm not hating either. I just, it's but, uh, it's for a reason. I was like, I was like, "Mom, I do not want to have to live with this guy." <laughs> I said, "He's gonna be weird, not know how to talk to me." I was like, really, really mean about it. And his profile picture was him holding these plungers on his tits, <laughs> like this. I was like, "Like that's funny, but like it's kind of weird for your profile yeah, picture." I don't know what this kid's gonna be like. And uh, end up being one of my best friends. So it's kind of weird how that there worked out. Yeah. I did not think I would be best friends with a guy that I thought was going to be a complete weirdo three years ago. Harry, if you're listening, you're fucking weirdo for putting toilet plungers on your, your True. Facebook True. profile nipples. True. He still would do it, though. He still would do it. I guarantee you would put that as a profile picture if we want No, that's to. pretty savage. I, I like when people don't care that much. Yeah, no, I think it's, it's awesome. It is pretty sweet. It is I pretty think sweet. it's cool when people don't – I think – Whenever they're using super, uh, what am I saying? Whenever they're using social media in like a non-superficial way and like a, like an opportunity to be goofy, and like a very like real and like organic and genuine way, I think that shit's like the best form, the best way to use social media. Yeah, that's no, awesome. absolutely, absolutely. I'm with you. 100%. Well, cool, dude. It was fun having you on, man. Oh yeah, man. Anytime. Appreciate you. Appreciate no you. Thank you, man. And uh, this wraps up our bang you rain rainbow unicorn. I love how you remember it. You said it quicker <laughs> than me, and I'm staring right at the can. I love it. Rainbow Unicorn. I love that flavor. Today. All right. One, two, three, three. All right, I got to count down because it's ending. Three, two, one. Bye.